Audiobook title, Why the Hell Must I Follow the Fate of Novel If I Can Do Anything, 01-13, by Yakusu. This work belongs to author Yakusu, source scribblehub.com. Chapter 1. What is destiny? Does destiny always be true? If the person is destined to die tomorrow, can that person avoid the death? Do humans just follow the flow of destiny or can we break the flow of it? That was what I always thought about the villainous novel where people trapped in the novel's world and became villains, but it seemed they didn't know what is fate or destiny of them, they just followed the flow of the novel's story. There were two types of fate that religious people believed, first the fate where humans could not change it, no matter the humans wanted to change this fate, they would face it, it was the fate of death, and the fate of a soulmate. God already decided your fate about those, where or when or how you would die, or who will be your soulmates. God already had the note of that before human birth. The other fate was the fate you could change, there was a lot of this type of fate, the fate you would pass the exam, it depended on you, you wanted to study or not, it was not God's matter, it was your matter. You want to be healthy, you wanted to be rich, you wanted to be famous, etc., it was your fate that you could change how you act. But there was an exception from the fate you could not change, the exception was you still needed to try, for example you wanted to have soulmate or partner to marry. But you didn't have any effort to find it, just stayed alone waiting someone came to you, God would not unite you with the fate one, and if you didn't want to die fast, so you needed to stay healthy, eat healthy food. So did the novel's story like the God's fate, where the character of the novel could not change it, but if someone was aware of the story, it should change the story or the fate of the novel. Why did every novel I read about this concept seem like they weren't aware of this concept? The character seemed so focused about the novel's story and seemed scared about the future of her. It was not the case if you were aware, you could easily change the fate of the villain character. You just avoided the death flag of fate where it would bring disaster to the villain character, or just trying something new. But in a lot of novels, the person who was trapped in the villain's body, just kept following the story of the novel, like they wanted to unite the male lead with the female protagonist, or they weren't aware of the male lead feeling and many more where it was bound to the story. But there was some novel who was common sense of fate, the villain just got the fuck out from the story, like she was going to the countryside or hidden from the society just lived relaxed. Just imagine you already knew and remembered the date of all the sun and moon eclipse, and traveled back in time. You presented to all the people, said about the sun and moon eclipse. Immediately people saw the eclipse, and thought it was your power, everyone would worship you as saint, apostle or any call. So this kind of power to know the future was so big, why all the characters' novels just blatantly follow the rules of the world's novel. Just bend the rules and be you not be the villain of the novel. Sometimes it was dumb until. One day in the evening, I opened my eyes, and saw the different ceiling, the ceiling that I never saw in my life. In front of me was my hair, that was long hair, it felt that I never had long hair. Half asleep I tried to get up from the bed, and my hair kept in front of me. I looked around, I didn't recognize the room, the design was so old than the modern day, there was a big mirror, big dressing table, big wardrobe, big window with big balcony beside of bed, everything seemed fancy to me, even the bed was so fancy, I saw the door open in my room, there was a maid who brought a bowl with a towel and entered the room, our eyes met, suddenly she was surprised and dropped the bowl with the towel, I raised my hand to call her, but she immediately exited the room. I laid back and examined what the hell was going on. I never had a room like this before, I never had white hair like this before. My face was maybe more beautiful than before. I stood up from the bed to check my face and my body, I walked to the big mirror beside the window. In front of the mirror, I saw someone's body with thin cloth pajamas. It was not my body, the body was smaller than my own body, it was maybe around 14 years old. Unbelieve what I just saw, I kept touching the body and the hair. The sound of the door opened, I turned back my head to the door. Saw so some people entering my room. There was the maid before, a lady with long white hair, a man with short white hair, and there was a little boy and a little girl behind them. Their faces were so worried. Is that really my Aurelia? The lady spoke. The lady and the man immediately approached me, and hugged me. I wanted to reply to the hug, but I didn't know what was going on, it felt awkward. The lady showed her face to me and I saw there was a tear in her eyes. Aurelia, you have a wake, how is your body? Is there any hurt anywhere? The lady said it to me. Oh dear, how about you calm for a second, it seems Aurelia can't handle a lot of thought, 
and look at her face, she is still in shock and pale. The man tried to confront the lady. The two released their hug to me. I know, my dear, but to see Aurelia awake and standing makes me so happy. I can't hold my feelings against it. They didn't hug me anymore, but there was something nagging my leg. It was the little boy and the little girl hugged my leg. When I saw the two carefully, they were twins, with different eye colors. The girl had red eyes like the lady and white long hair, and the boy had blue eyes like the man and white short hair. The girl held a doll in her arm. They were so cute. Aurelia, you need to take a rest in bed, and you two let her leg go. The little two released their hug in my leg, and the lady accompanied me to the bed with everyone in back. I laid down again in bed, and she lifted the blanket. How's your body? The lady kept questioning. Are you, re? Lee daughter I tried to say something to them. What is it? You called me Aurelia, is that my name? I saw everyone's faces shocked after I asked about it. The man immediately shouted where the physician that I have ordered earlier. I saw his face startled. She is on the way here, your grace. The maid answered it. How long? You pick her up. The maid straight away ran out of the room. The lady's face was startled like disbelief. I saw the two felt uneasy about it. The lady kept holding my right hand, and the man kept walking back and forth. The little two were beside the lady. The room filled with complete silence, the lady beside me kept holding my right hand. The little two were beside my face. After some minutes of silence, the maid came to the room with a red-haired woman. The maid addressed the man the physician has come, your grace. Great, quickly check my daughter. The words of my daughter surprised me, the little two stepped back from me and let the woman come and sat in bed beside me, but the lady kept holding my right hand. The physician touched my hand, especially the pulse. I saw she closed her eyes while checking my pulse. After some moments, she touched my forehead and touched her own forehead. I realized she checked my temperature compared with her temperature in her forehead. The physician addressed the lady and the man I believe there is nothing wrong with her condition. Are you 100% sure about it? The man replied, I'm sure your grace, but she asked about her name, it felt like she didn't know her own name. The lady replied, I looked at the physician and she turned her face to me, do you know your own name? She asked me, they called me Aurelia, I think that's my name, before they called you Aurelia, did you know your own name? I don't know, can you remember about the past? What past? Hey ma'am, how about these two children behind me, do you recognize them? I looked carefully at their faces I have no idea. The lady and the man's faces became so worried. Do you not know them? I'm sorry I have no idea. How about the lady that is still holding your hand right now? Do you recognize her? I turned my face to her I don't have any idea. The lady's face became more anxious and worried. How about your dream? Do you have any dreams when you are asleep? I can't remember it. The physician stood up, moved forward to the lady and the man. I saw her whisper something to them. They followed her out of the room. After they were out of the room, there were still the little two in the room. I saw their faces like they wanted to cry. They came to my bed and held my right arm. The boy spoke first sister Aurelia, do you really not know us? I cannot answer his question. The girl spoke with shutter like she wanted to cry sis, ter, oh, Leah. Are uh, you real lie, sis, ter, Aurelia? Still I cannot answer the question. The girl showed her doll with her two hands to me look. You amuse, T, K, now, who, she, is. I kept quiet. The girl seemed to not be able to hold her emotions anymore, and started to cry. The boy tried to calm her to stop crying, but it failed and he started to cry too. I got up from laying in the bed, and tried to calm them down. I put my hands to their head, and started to pat them. I was just smiling at them. The man and the lady with the physician immediately went into the room. The lady went to the little two, and started to calm them down. The man went with her. The physician stood in front of my bed. The physician tried to explain to all of us I think it is better to let everyone know, especially my lady about the condition of my lady. She started to make statement my lady has suffered memory loss, the amount of memory lost, I still don't know it, because my lady didn't recognize madam. Madam was the one who gave birth my lady, if my lady didn't recognize her own birth mother, it is possible that all the memory of my lady is lost. But there is hope in my lady situation, usually when people lost their memory, they would act like a baby or child. My lady acted not like a baby or child, even my lady understood what I had said, so it would be great if my lady started to learn everything again. 
I hope in the process of learning, my lady regains her memory. It's great, but I think it's better if we start introducing ourselves, the lady said let me introduce myself to you, my name is Cordelia Aurelius, I am your birth mother like she said, and you are Aurelia Aurelius, she patted the little two do you want to introduce yourselves on your own, or your mother introduce you to your own sister, no, I w a n t to intro, juice, my, self, asterisk, sob, asterisk, sob, the boy stuttered from crying my, name, is, asterisk, sob, asterisk, sob, Aurelia Aurelius, I, am, asterisk, sob, asterisk, sob, Ophi, Leah, or, Elias, asterisk, sob, asterisk, sob, the girl stuttered, the lady patted their head, I turned my face to the man, the lady turned her face too to the man dear, I think you start to introduce yourself too, right, right, I am Marcus Aurelius, I am your father, as you already knew, we are the Aurelius family, and the one who checked you is our family physician, her name is Sophia, Sophia was bowing to me, I think it's better for you to take a rest first, after hearing all of this, two of you let your sister take a rest, all of them left the room, 18, chapter 2, my identity was Aurelia Aurelius, I laid in bed, but why I don't remember anything, I closed my eyes and tried to sleep, but I could not fall asleep as well, I got up from my bed, walked toward the balcony beside the bed. I opened the big glass door of the balcony, the wind immediately blew my hair and made my hair waving like the wind. In front of me, a mother of Luna appeared with her full form in the sky, her appearance was so big and white. She illuminated all the places with her form. I leant in the balcony. The wind was so windy that it kept blowing my hair, it made me comfortable after the things of before. It felt like she sent this wind and made me clear my mind. I stayed on the balcony for a few minutes while looking at the garden in front of me. After my mind was clear, I went in. I closed the curtain's balcony door. I laid on the bed and tried to sleep, and in a few minutes I fell asleep. When I was asleep, I felt something patting my body and pushing. My vision was suddenly full of red, not dark anymore. It meant there was a light illuminated to me, so I opened my eyes. The curtain's balcony door had been drawn, making my vision blurry for a few seconds. I regained my vision, and saw it was the maid yesterday. My lady, good morning. The maid greeted, good morning. I yawned, did you not sleep well, my lady? I slept well, but from yesterday, it made me a little bit tired. His grace and everyone are waiting for my lady at the table for breakfast. Oh my really? I better go right now. I immediately got up from the bed, and walked toward the door. But the maid stopped me in front of me. My lady, I think you need to dress before you go there. Dress? It's just breakfast right? Why do I need to be dressed? What's wrong with my pajamas? There is nothing wrong with my lady pajamas, but it is appropriate if you are well dressed at the table. But, they are waiting for me, it's not more appropriate to make them wait. I believe his grace and madam will know my lady's condition. If you say like that, sure I will be dressed. My lady, can follow me. I was led by the maid to the dressing table. I saw there was a bowl of water, small towel, and soap on the floor, and I sat at the chair in front of the dressing table. She took the soap and mixed it into the water in the bowl, after that she used the small towel, and washed it on my face. Excuse me, my lady. She started to rub the towel on my face. She finished washing my face. I saw her open the drawer of the dressing table, took out a few small jars, and put it on top of the dressing table. The maid started combing my hair with a wooden comb, it took some minutes to comb my hair. I saw she took a powder from a small jar in the dressing table, and applied it to my hair, it has a rose scent. My hair smelt like a rose. I saw she took another powder from a different small jar, and rubbed it on my face, after that she took a cream from another jar, and rubbed it too on my face. And she took oily powder and mixed it with the rose scent, after that she rubbed it on my face. Next she applied a blush to my cheeks mixed with rose scent, and she did not forget to rub my lip with another powder mixed with honey. I thought the makeup of my face was done because she walked toward the wardrobe. She came back to me with a dress and a sort of stocking with garter belt. She started to undress me. After undressing me, she crouched down to put on the stockings for me, before she dressed me with the dress, she rubbed me some deodorant, and dressed me. I looked in the mirror, my face was so different than last night it was more sparkling, the dress was so well made and fancy, it was a white dress, it's done, my lady, is it necessary to do all of this just for breakfast, of course, it is necessary my lady, it is my job to maintain your beauty every day, every day, 
you said, yes, every day. It's like I will go to a party if we do like this. If my lady prepares to go to the party, there will be more steps to beautify my lady. Really? Yes, as my lady see in this dressing table, there is two section of drawers. What cosmetic I used to my lady is in the right section. It just a cosmetic for daily basic. And if my lady go to the party, I will use the drawer of left section too. There will be more treatment for my lady's face. All of this baffling my mind. My lady doesn't need to think of it. Just let me do it for my lady. Right, and I am still not catching your name. My name is Adeline, my lady. She was a black hair maid, her appearance like in her twenties. I will remember it, let's go to breakfast, can you lead me to the breakfast room? Of course, my lady. We left the room, and walked to the breakfast room or dining room. On the way, I didn't recognize anything from the house, and the house was huge. There were a lot of fancy ornaments, and a lot of paintings on the wall. There were a lot of fancy objects too, not just on the wall. My room was on the second floor, and it took us more time to arrive at the breakfast room. In the room, I saw everyone was in their seats already. Adele led me to my seat, it was in between the little two Aurelio and Ophelia. She set up the chair from the table before I sat, after I sat. She set up my chair again to the table, and she left from the room. In front of us was our mother, and our father was in the middle of the table. There was still nothing on the table. How's your feeling, Aurelia? Mother said to me. It's getting better, sorry for making mother so worried about me. It's alright, I think your brother and your sister are the ones who worry you so much. I turned my face to each of them, and patted their head with my two hands. While patting their head, I said forgive this big sister, that makes my little siblings so worried. I will forgive sister Aurelia, if sister Aurelia played doll with me Ophelia said to me. Sure, I will play it with you later. Unfair. You will play with me too right, Sister Aurelia? Aurelius intervened. It's alright I will play with all of you two later. The two were so happy, but. Aurelia will play with all of you tomorrow, today I want to introduce Aurelia with her tutor. Father finally spoke a word. Yeah. The two whining. It's okay, if your father said tomorrow it means Aurelia will be free all day tomorrow and you too can play all day with her. Mother calmed them. Really? Aurelio was excited. Aurelio, don't get excited first. Ophelia intervened. Why, Ophelia? The two started talking to each other secretly in front of my lap, but everyone could hear their talking. It is father, Aurelio, do you learn something from all the things that father said to us? What do you mean Ophelia? Father is a cunning person, so we are better not to trust his word. But mother agrees with father, does it mean we can trust father's word? The two turned their faces to their mother. Mother is an ally of father, maybe she schemes with father to take sister Aurelia from us. It makes sense. Mother and father started to make small giggles from the little two's conversation and behavior. See Aurelio, they are laughing at us. Right, right, how about sister Aurelia, is she laughing right now? They looked at me, I just used poker face. Sister Aurelia is our only ally, Ophelia, because she is Sister Aurelia. Are you aware that your father and your mother can hear your conversation right? Father intervened. The two faces were surprised. We don't try to steal your sister from you, mother said. We don't believe it, right Aurelio? Yes. What will make you believe us that we will not steal Aurelia, father said. Promise to us, that tomorrow we will get Sister Aurelia all day, Ophelia said. I promise you will get Aurelia all day. Father promised. No, father needs to raise one of father's hands so we will trust your promise, right Ophelia? Yes, father needs to raise hand. Father raised his right hand I promise you will get Aurelia all day. What will happen if father breaks the promise? Ophelia asked. Yes, what is the consequence? I will take the family to stroll in the city and take the family to shop. Deal, Ophelia immediately agreed about the father promise. Mother and father were giggling. Yeah. Aurelio was surprised and turned his face to Ophelia why are you suddenly agreeing, Ophelia? Just agree with it, Aurelio. Well, Ophelia is a girl too, so it will be agreeing, mother intervened. Maybe it is inherited from you, my dear. Oh my, Aurelio acts more like you too, dear. The little two were arguing for some moments in front of my lap, and mother and father made a conversation. But there was something important. When will we start to eat breakfast? I am so hungry right now, my thoughts. After a few minutes had passed,
The table situation became normal again. Father clapped his hands, and immediately some maids went to the room with some plates in their hands. They served it in front of us. Finally, we were starting to eat. The breakfast was finished, and Adele led me to my room. Arriving in my room, I wanted to lay down in bed, immediately I ran to the bed and jumped to the bed. My lady! What are you doing? Adele with a worried tone. I just want to lay down in bed. You are in a dress, it is not appropriate to do that. Eh, how about sitting on the balcony, my lady? And enjoy the view of the garden. Alright. I got up from the bed, and I realized there was a table and a chair on the balcony. What I remembered from last night, there was no table and chair. There was a tea set, cookies, and cakes too. Adele set up the chair for me, I sat on the chair, she set up the chair to the table. She started to pour tea into the cup. I took a sip of it, and enjoyed the view and the wind. Adele kept standing beside me. My lady, you can eat the cookie or the cake. I will try it if I want it. I am already full from breakfast, I cannot eat anything for now. My thoughts. There was someone knocking the door, Adele immediately went to it and checked who it was. It was a butler, and I saw the butler say something to Adele, after that he went off. Adele passed the message from the butler to me. My lady, his grace, wants to meet my lady in his room. We immediately went to my father's room and Adele led the way. We reached in front of my father's room, and the door was so big. I thought it must be three times taller than my height. You can enter the room, my lady, I will wait here. Are you not accompanying me inside? No, I think it will be better if my lady and his grace talking privately, it will not be appropriate for me to disturb it. All right then. I pushed the door, and saw the room was so big, with a lot of bookshelves full of books, and there was my father sitting at the working desk with a lady standing in front of me. I saw the lady didn't wear a dress like I do but it felt like man's clothes and had blonde hair. I walked toward my father. Father's eyes met me. Aurelia, you are already here. Yes, father, is there something that you need me for? I have told you in breakfast before, that I will introduce you to your tutor right. Father's eyes went to the lady she will be your tutor and lady in waiting for now. Greetings, my lady. She bowed to me my name is Octavi Claudie, I will be your tutor and your lady in waiting. Greeting to Octavi. She is from the Palace Academy, her knowledge and her ability are so excellent. If my father praised Lady Octavi so much, it must be true. It's an honor to me that Lady Aurelia and His Grace praised me. You two can have a tea party, so you two will know each other. Like father said, I believe there are some cakes and cookies on my balcony. How about Lady Octavi accompany me on the balcony and enjoy the view of the garden? I will gladly accept it. I think it is better to have a tea party in the garden than enjoy it from the balcony. Father suggested. It's a great suggestion father, I ask Adele to prepare it. No, father will ask a butler to prepare it. Father clapped his hands. Immediately a butler opened the door. I was amazed that the sound of father's clapping could be heard from outside. Prepare a tea party for my daughter and Lady Octavi in the garden. The butler bowed and left. With that, the tea party is settled. You two can go to the garden to enjoy the tea and the view. 19. Chapter 3. Lady Octavi and I walked toward the garden led by Adil. I observed Lady Octavi walking. The posture was more like a man walking than a lady, her body was strapping every step she walked. We arrived at the entrance of the garden. The garden was so spacious, and there was a pavilion in the middle of it. We walked toward the pavilion, and I noticed that there were two chairs and a table with a tea set, cookies, and cakes in the pavilion. There were a lot of types of plants in the garden with different colors, which made the garden full of color. Adele set up the chair for me first, after me, she set up the chair for Lady Octavi. She poured the tea for me and Lady Octavi, we took a sip. Lady Octavi, how old are you? Sorry if it's disrespectful to you. No it's not disrespectful, I am 21 years old, my lady. And my father said that Lady Octavi was from the Palace Academy, what's it like to be in there? Hmm, -hmm. does my lady want to enter the academy in the future? I still don't have any intention of thinking about going there. Well, the academy is huge as well, and there are a lot of nobles who roll in there. Really a noble studies there, what type of nobles? I saw her face and seemed surprised. My lady, you are aware that you are a noble too, right? I am a noble. Yes, my lady, your family Aurelia's family is a distinguished family, and is respected over the kingdom. It is a shame for me that I don't know anything about my own family. 
It's all right my lady, your father gave me the mandate to educate and give all the knowledge that my lady needs, and your father had told me the situation of my lady facing off. If my father trusts you so much, I will trust you to educate me. Just leave it to me, my lady. I took a sip of tea. Can you tell me about my own family? Of course, the Aurelius family has a long history of being a distinguished family. The present of the family is like the present of the royal family of the kingdom. Does my lady know the meaning of Aurelius? I don't know. Aurelius means golden, and the kingdom gives the nickname of the family as the golden family, the family being respected not just the name of Aurelius, but the family is well known as a sharp family. The proof is in here. Does my lady know what city my lady lives in? I don't aware of that. This city is the most developed city in the entire kingdom, even the capital of the kingdom development cannot beat the development of this city. It's because of the Aurelius family. If my lady family is such a distinguished family, does my lady have any idea what peerage of the family is? What is the peerage? I don't know about that. Peerage is a title granted from the kingdom to the family, it has some rank. Let's start from the lowest, the first one is Baron, the Baron is who oversees the village. The second is the Viscount doesn't have any land, Viscount job is not oversee a land but to help for the higher peerage rank. The third is the Earl or Count who oversees the county, the fourth is the Marquess who oversees the border of the kingdom. The fifth is the Duke who oversees the duchy, and the highest one is the King who oversees the kingdom, the Aurelius peerage rank is the Duke. The family oversees the Duchy of Florence and the family doesn't have Count and Baron vassals who oversees their county and their village. All the county and the villages in the Duchy of Florence has been overseas by the family. What's your rank Lady Octavi? She took a sip of tea. My family rank is Viscount, my lady, and our family is the vassal of Aurelius. So you are my vassal, Lady Octavi. Yes, the Claudie family has been the vassal of Aurelius for a long time. Over the generations Claudie Gens are the sword and the right hand of Aurelius, it is a great honor to swear fealty to your family, my lady. Well, I hope our relation is not agitated by the peerage relation. If my lady hopes for it, I will fulfill it. Thanks, and my father said you are my lady in waiting, can I ask you what is that? Lady in waiting is a companion a lady, my lady it is usually in the royal court, but your family is so different and special, so it has a lady in waiting. Beside a companion, lady in waiting can be a bodyguard of lady. To be a bodyguard, it means Lady Octavia is great with a sword right? Well I can swing my sword, I don't know if it is great in the eyes of my lady. Do you mind if you show me some moves of your sword? You have the sword in your hip? Sure, I can show it to you. Lady Octavia stood up from her seat, and walked toward the open grass in front of me with her sword. My lady, while I am doing the move, I will tell you the name of the move. She started to make a move, the first move was she raised the sword with two hands up in her head. This is the stance of ox or ox, it focuses on the enemy's face and throat, and cutting it. She thrusted her sword so fast, after that swung diagonally fast. Next, she lowered her sword with her two hands in between her two legs, the sword pointed to the ground. This is the stance of Alba or Fool, it is the defense stance, as my lady sees right now, this is a provocative stance. She pointed to her torso with right hand. While my sword is in between my legs, the enemy's eyes will focus this upper body because it is so wide open as the name of the stance for it is a fool to attack right away because she swung her sword upward vertically and swung horizontally. In this stance, it is easier to counter the attacks and easier for our lower body to move. She brought back the sword to her sword scabbard in her hip and bowed to me. I clapped my hands. I hope it's enough to impress my lady about my sword skill and there are still some moves, if my lady is curious about the sword, I can teach my lady about it, but with my lady father's approval first. Suddenly a voice of someone could be heard from behind Lady Octavia that's amazing. We turned to the voice, and it was Aurelio and Ophelia. Aurelio immediately ran to Lady Octavia with their maids. You, what was that? Aurelio spoke to her. That was just a small sword move, she answered. Aurelio started to imitate the move of Lady Octavia you doing like this and like that, and with fast you doing like this, that was amazing, teach me. How do you do it? Aurelio, you are being disrespectful in front of Sister Aurelia's guest. Ophelia behind Aurelio you should introduce yourself first, before asking someone a question or making a request to a guest. She lifted her skirt and greeted Lady Octavia deeply apologize. 
for my brother's behavior. Lady Octavia responded to the greeting and greeted back with bowing to them it's okay young Lady Ophelia, and young Master Aurelio, and let me introduce myself. My name is Octavia Claudi. Lady Octavia seems to already know about our name, but we will still introduce ourselves. I am Ophelia Aurelius, and this is my stubborn brother. My name is Aurelio Aurelius. What's Lady Octavia position to have an afternoon tea with our sister Aurelia? Ophelia tried to intimidate her. Your father has appointed me as tutor and lady in waiting for Lady Aurelia, so it's my obligation to accompany her. So you are the one who is trying to steal our time with Sister Aurelia. Aurelio said, Well I am not aware what young master is talking about. If the young master wants to be with Lady Aurelia, of course the young master and young lady can join us. The little two came to the pavilion with Lady Octavia, and suddenly there were two chairs beside me without my knowledge. Their maid set up the seat for the little two, and lifted them to the chair. How do you guys know that I am here? I asked them. Aurelio was the one who watched Sister Aurelia come to the garden from his room, and informed me that Sister Aurelia had a tea party with someone. Ophelia answered, Yes, we want to bring back Sister Aurelia from someone who stole her from us. Aurelio said with pointing his finger to Lady Octavia, Don't blame or accuse Lady Octavia, father has appointed her as tutor and lady in waiting for your sister, and Aurelio, before you said you wanted Lady Octavia teach you about something. Ah yes, you teach me how you did that. Aurelio said with a happy tone, I can teach the young master about it, but with your father's approval, really? I will talk to my father later. Lady Aurelia, I can teach lady too. I will consider it. Mu. No, dot. Ophelia suddenly sister Aurelia will become a proper lady, with her beauty, she will become the center lady of the kingdom, so she must not hold a sword. But Ophelia, as you can see, Lady Octavia is a lady too but she is great with a sword. Really? May I ask you a question Lady Octavia? Sure. To be a tutor for Sister Aurelia, you must have an education background. May I know what your background is? I am from the Palace Academy, and I am from the Claudi family. Sister Aurelia, Palace Academy is not a lady academy. It is a knight academy who wants to be a knight. So you are a knight. That's amazing. Aurelia was amazed with Lady Octavia. Aurelio, why are you amazed by that? She is a knight that became a tutor to Sister Aurelia. What's wrong with that, Ophelia? Why should a knight become a tutor for Sister Aurelia? It must be a lady to become tutor for Sister Aurelia not a knight. Well, a knight can become a lady too right like Lady Octavia. Let's not judge Lady Octavia. Father has chosen her. It means there is nothing wrong about that. I said, but her outfit is not a lady outfit, but a man's outfit. But she is still beautiful with that outfit right, a real lady will be beautiful with any outfit. I think she is cool with her outfit. Aurelio said, see even Aurelio as boy can see the beautiful and the coolest of Lady Octavia, whatever. Ophelia grumbled. The four of us continued the tea party, like eating the cookies, cakes or drinking the tea. We were having afternoon tea, until the sun almost set. The tea party was over and Lady Octavia parted away to go home. Ophelia was still grumbling and went off without a word, Aurelio was still with me. We were walking to the second floor together with our maid. Aurelio, it seems you are interested in swords. Yes, Sister Aurelia, after saw Lady Octavia, while walking, he imitated Lady Octavia's swords move she was doing this so fast. And like that, and that was so amazing and cool. How about we asked father, to give Lady Octavia a permit? so she can teach you in the future. Really? Yes, I will try to ask father about that. Thanks Sister Aurelia. 15. Chapter 4. In the evening, we had dinner in the dining room, everyone was in there. How was your day Aurelia? How was Octavia in person? Father asked me. It was great, father, Octavia seems like an amazing person. She told me about our family and peerage rank, which I didn't know, and she showed me her moves with a sword. Phew, she already showed her sword moves. Yes father. I looked at Aurelio, he seemed to want to ask father about the sword and there is something I want to ask father. What is it, Aurelia? It seems Aurelio has an interest in sword. It happened when Aurelio saw the sword move of Octavia, and he was so impressed by it, he asked Octavia to teach him about sword, and Octavia with pleasure accepted it. But with father's permission, 
Can father give Aurelio a permission to learn sword from Octavi? Father looked at Aurelio, after that to mother. My dear, I can't say anything, it's all up to you dear, I believe in your choice for our kids education and educator. But is it too early for Aurelio to learn sword, he is just seven years old, dear. Dear, I think it's okay for Aurelio to learn sword, other families start to teach their kids sword when they are seven years old, so it's okay for him to learn sword. Okay then, if you said like that. Father turned his face to Aurelio Aurelio, you can learn about sword, but you learn it from me. From father? Is my father familiar with sword I asked? Oh my, it seems Aurelia doesn't know about your father's capability with a sword, dear. Mother replied. I can't say it's familiar, but your father is capable of holding a sword, maybe more capable than Octavi. Father answered. Well, it is good news for you right, Aurelio. I turned my face to Aurelio. Yes, thanks sister Aurelia for talking it to father. Aurelio thanked. Oh my my, if Aurelio is so interested with sword, is my Aurelia interested too with sword? Octave I have asked it, mother. If I am interested in it, she told me she could teach me. Well, it is alright for you to learn sword too. Father suggested. Enoa Ophelia shouted sister Aurelia is a lady, why does she need to hold a sword? My my, it seems Ophelia is so against sister Aurelia to hold a sword, why my Ophelia against it? Because she is a lady, her beauty will be wasted if she focuses on a sword rather than a lady thing. Your mother has held a sword too, even great with it. Father said. Ophelia's face unbelieve what father said is it true, mother? Yes it is, your mother had learnt swords since your age. Why did my mother learn a sword, ma'am? How can I say it? Maybe to impress your father, your mother learnt about sword. Father's face was so nervous. To impress father? I asked. Yes, to impress him. I learnt the sword, right dear? Y, E, S. It right. Father's voice seemed nervous. Mother clapped right, how about Ophelia start to learn it too, but from your mother, and can compete with each other to raise each other's passion in sword. Who's better at sword? Right, dear. Mother with a cynical smile to father. Yes it's a great idea, dear, but if Ophelia agrees to it, right Ophelia? Father kept nervous. I will think about it first, father. Ophelia answered. Ophelia doesn't worry about being a proper lady, your mother will teach you to be a lady and be good with a sword. Mother said. Well you two are lucky, father and mother take their time to teach you too, is that great? I said to little too. Aurelio nodded happily, but Ophelia still did not answer. The dinner was over. When I wanted to excuse myself, my mother waved at me. Mother led me to a room with Adele. In the room, there was a chaise lounge, sofas, some chairs, and tables. In my mind, it was a lounge room, in the tables there were cookies and tea sets. Mother invited me to have tea after dinner. We sat beside each other on sofas. Is there something my mother wants from me? That mother invite me to have tea together. I asked, my, your mother just wants to have tea with you, there is nothing I want from you, if it's like that. I took a sip from tea. Honestly, I want to tell you about your fiancé. I spurted my drink what? Immediately Adele came to me, and wiped my face and my dress with a handkerchief. Thanks Adele, sorry about it. It's alright Aurelia. Mother said. So what is fiancé about? I asked. Well, I think it's better to tell you about your fiancé since you have lost memory, so you are not nervous about meeting with him. It means I have a fiancé. Yes, you are. It's normal for someone your age to have a fiancé. Okay, who's my fiancé? It's Fabian Julius, he is two years older than you. This year, he is sixteen years old. Have I met him in the past? Yes you have, but it's alright if you don't remember it. Does mother want me to meet him? If it can make me remember something. No no no, mother just wants to tell you about him. There is no intention to arrange a meeting between you and him yet. Well, if what mother said, thanks mother for telling me about my fiancé. It's okay, and I want to know about your day. I started to tell everything about today to mother. I told her about Octavi, her sword moves, the meeting between the little two with Octavi, and the grumbling of Ophelia. Mother's expression was happy, and giggling when I told her about it, and our tea time ended. Adele started to lead me to the room. On the way to the room. Adele, are you familiar with holding a sword? Yes I am, my lady. Really? That's amazing, Adele. 
what do you think of me learning about sword? I think it's great my lady, and I saw Lady Octavia's sword moves was amazing back then, so Lady Octavia will be a great sword tutor for you, my lady. Maybe I will ask her about it, and have you met my fiancé? Yes I have, my lady. Can you tell me how my fiancé is? I think he is very handsome for you, and a great partner for you, my lady. Just that? Is there something you can tell me? I believe it's just that. We kept walking, until we reached the room. In the room, Adele led me to the dressing table. She wanted to change my dress to pajamas because it was almost night time. I sat at the dressing table, and there was a bowl with water and towel under the dressing table. I thought she prepared it when we had dinner, she started to wash my face with it, comb my hair, and started to change my dress to pajamas. After it was done, I walked to the bed, and Adele started to draw close all the curtains in the room. I laid at the bed, Adele said good night to me, and I replied to her. She left the room and closed the door. Fiancé huh? I started talking to myself how's my fiancé? Why don't I remember anything about him? Well I don't remember my own mother, how I will remember my fiancé, I changed my sleep position to a side position, when will I remember everything, I will just live my life without remembering anything, but try to learn new things, I started to close my eyes, and fell asleep. Suddenly, I was in the middle of some ballroom. I was in white dress and there was someone beside me, it was a man with blonde hair. I could not focus on his face, it was like he didn't have a face. We walked to the middle of the ballroom, and we were dancing. In the middle of dancing, the man left me alone in the middle of the ballroom, he chased a woman with red hair. Everyone stared at me like they were ridiculing me and shunned me. I saw him with the woman, and once more, I couldn't see anyone's face, it was like they didn't have any faces. The man and the woman were approaching me while holding each other. Out of nowhere, I felt angry at them. The women showed off their hands holding each other to me, and she was smiling cynically to me. They left me after showing off. For some reason, I chased her and tried to grab her hair, but out of the blue, the floor was gone, and I fell off. I felt I had fallen off endlessly, while I was falling, I heard all the people laughing at me. I closed my eyes, opened it, I was on the ground. In my eyes there was blood dripping from my forehead. My hands and my feet were being tied in front of me. It was the woman with red hair. She looked at me and she raised her right hand in front of her face, placed all her fingers spread out, and suddenly grasped all the fingers like the claws of a bird grasping and tearing at something. Two men came to me and put me in a sack. Before I went to the sack, I saw the blonde-haired man with the woman holding hands. I saw from inside the sack, they put a serpent, a cock, a monkey, and a dog in the sack with me. They closed the sack, and I felt pain from all the fighting between the animals. All the animals bit me, scratched me, pecked me, from all the pain, suddenly I felt in the air, and there was water coming inside the sack, I was drowning. I woke up from the dream, started to scream in the middle of the night because the dream Adele was the one who came to me, I just sat in the bed and wrapped myself with a blanket. I was so scared and made my body tremble and my teeth kept shivering. Adele was beside me, trying to comfort me. What was happening, my lady? I ignored the word from Adele. I will inform his grace and madam, my lady. Adele left the room. In the meantime, I was still sitting in the bed with a wrapping blanket. I kept looking my face down, some moments later. I saw my mother's face in front of my eyes, her face was full of worries for me. I lifted my head, and saw it was not just my mother in there. There was father and Sophia the physician. M.Y. Aurelia. How was it going on? What made you scream and cry in the middle of night? Mother said with a worried tone. Ha, huh, what had mother said? You are crying right now, darling, are you not aware of that? He, huh? I am crying right now. I tried to wipe my eyes with my hand, and saw there was water in my hand it's true, I am crying. Mother, I looked to mother and there was a tear in her eyes but mother, you are crying too. Yes I am, Aurelia, we are crying right now, mother was giggling hee 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 what a weird situation right? I saw father pat the shoulder of mother. Dear, I think it's great if Sophia examines Aurelia first. Yes I know, dear. Wiping her tears. Mother gave a space to Sophia, so she could sit on the bed beside me. Hello, my lady, we meet again, do you still remember who I am? Sophia greeted me. Sure, you are Sophia my family physician, thank you, for remembering me, so what makes my lady scream and cry in the middle of night, can you tell me the reason for it, 15, chapter 5, 
In front of me was Sophia, my family physician. So what makes my lady scream and cry in the middle of night? Can you tell me the reason for it? She asked me. I was scared. Scared? What scared my lady off? When I was asleep, I had a dream. A dream? Is it okay for my lady to tell us about the dream? It's okay, Sophia. It started in the middle of the ballroom. I told everything to Sophia about the dream. Mother and father could hear it. That was a weird dream that my lady had been dreaming about. So all the people in the dream didn't have any faces. Yes, they didn't have any faces. And my lady seemed to get angry at the woman for without any reason in the dream. Yes, I suddenly felt angry at her. The man had left my lady in the middle of dancing. Yes, he had. H M M M M M M M M M. And did my lady feel anything in the dream? Feel like Phil getting hurt in the dream. I felt it. Did my lady have a dream yesterday? Yesterday? Yes. When we introduced ourselves to my lady. After that, my lady took a rest. Oh, that time I didn't have any dreams from yesterday's sleep. Did something happen today with my lady? Nothing in particular happened today. Mum, as you can see, my lady, dreams have a lot of meaning and some sources because dreams come from our memories of daily life or our physiology or the sound around. The sleeper, for my lady to have a dream like that is so weird because my lady has lost all the memory. It means to have a dream where my lady doesn't have any memory of daily life, memory of something precious or memory something bad is impossible for my lady. And for physiology, I think is impossible too. Sometimes people had dreams because their emotions, their fear, their trauma, or their happiness. With two days of my lady memory, I think my lady didn't pass all of that, right? So the question is, what is the source that makes my lady dream about it? Dot. So it is impossible for me to have a dream? It is not impossible. It is possible for my lady to have a dream. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Can you tell me one things that happened today? One thing. H M M M M M M M M. Maybe the meeting of Aurelio and Lady Octavia. Okay. What happened between them? Aurelio was amazed by Lady Octavia's sword move. Great. So my lady memory has remembered it properly of that event. I will tell my lady and everyone in here the amazing thing of dream. As I said, dream come from our memories. But in the dream, that memory usually been manipulated or reconstructed by our brain, and usually emotion joined the process of manipulation or reconstruction. What do you mean, Sophia? Mother asked her. Your Grace, Madam, and my Lady, let's take an example of my Lady's memory about today. The memory is telling about the meeting between young Master Aurelio and Lady Octavia, where the young Master was amazed by Lady Octavia. Sometimes the dream will expose the memory as real as possible, but the dream usually will manipulate or reconstruct it with emotion of the dreamer. My Lady's dream from that. Memory can be like this: Young Master Aurelio and Lady Octavia fight each other with their sword, or Young Master had been hurt by Lady Octavia with her sword. If my lady was overprotective with Young Master, I believe the second scenario will be in your dream: the emotion of losing Young Master or Young Master getting hurt will be swelling inside my lady mind and make the memory is being manipulated and reconstructed by it. So, from your hypothesis, Aurelia's condition is impossible for her to dream about what she has said. Father joined to ask her. Yes, Your Grace. The dream was far beyond the memory of my lady and the psychology of my lady, so it is impossible for my lady. Do you know why I had that dream about that? M.、Um, I saw Sophia turn her face to mother and father, and they turned their face to each other. I felt she was trying to neglect something and wanted to have a private discussion with them. It will be all right, my lady, but for right now, I think it's better for my lady to take a rest. And don't overthink it, like I said about dream. If my lady has overthinking about this, the chance of the dream appear again will be high. Just take a rest. Let me excuse myself, my lady. Sophia stood up from the bed. She left the room. It will be all right, Aurelia. Father said to me, Aurelia, just take a rest. Mother stroked my head, helped me to lay down in the bed, and lifted the blanket to me. Just don't overthink it, darling. Kissed my forehead. Everything will be all right. Good night, and have a nice dream. For you, you can sleep in the room beside this room. I believe it is empty and has been well cleaned. So you will be the first one to know if something happens with Aurelia. Father said to Adil, "Yes, Your Grace. Good night, Aurelia." Father and mother said to me in front of the door. Father, mother, and Adil left the room. I tried to sleep, but just kept thinking about what Sophia said. Dreams come from my memory and my psychology. 
So how that dream could be manifested to my head. I was talking alone that's why everyone in the dreams didn't have any faces. Because I don't have any information nor memory about them. So who is this blonde man and red haired woman? Why is there a grudge against them? Suddenly I could hear a shout of anger from outside behind the door. It was like someone was having a conversation. Is that mother and father? Are they having a discussion with Sophia about my condition? Dot let's just try to fall asleep. I closed my eyes, suddenly full of bright red in my vision. I opened my eyes, and it was a light from the door of the balcony. Adele had drawn open the curtains, because it was morning already. She pulled my blanket, and helped me to get up from sleep. After I got up from sleep. Good morning, my lady. Good morning to you too. Does my lady have a good night's sleep? Well, I just closed my eyes, and suddenly it was morning already. So the dream was not coming up again. After I told Sophia, the dream was not coming up again. Is that great, my lady? Yes, it is. Dot and last night, after my father and mother left the room, I suddenly heard someone outside shouting in anger, were they talking outside of my room? Hamam, I didn't recall his grace and madam talked in front of my lady room. That was weird, I recalled it, that I heard someone from outside. Maybe, it was my lady's imagination, how about we start the morning? I believe his grace and madam are already in the dining room for breakfast. Yes, you need to transform me every day and every morning. I stood up from bed. What do you mean about transforming my lady? Adele was talking to me while we walked to the dressing table. Is it not transforming? No, it is not. It beautifies the beauty of my lady. Right, right, right. I sat at the dressing table, and Adele started to make up me and dressed me up. After a long time of makeup and dressing me up, finally it was over. I am still unbelieving about this. I was still sitting at the dressing table. Unbelieving about what, my lady? Adele in the middle tidied up all the makeup jar to the drawer dressing table. That I need to have all of this every morning. I took a closer look in the mirror. It is my lady duty to keep beautiful, and it is my obligation to maintain it. After that, we left the room, and Adele led me to the dining room. In the dining room, there was already father and mother at the table. The little two seemed to haven't arrived yet. Adele set up my chair, I sat in the chair, and she set it again to close to the table and she left the room. How's your condition Aurelia? Father asked me. I am fine, father. Did you sleep well? Mother asked me. Yes, I did, mother. After I told Sophia about the dream, I slept well. I am relieved to hear that, if you have a nightmare that is so real, you can tell mother, or Sophia, Aurelia. Mother said. It's gonna be alright, sure I will tell mother if I had it. Don't forget to tell your father too. Father said, of course, I will not forget about you, father. The little two have come to the dining room. The two maids set up the chairs, lifted them up to the chairs. What? Sister Aurelia having a nightmare? Aurelio talked while being lifted up to the chair. Really, is it a scary nightmare, Sister Aurelia? Ophelia talked while her chair was set up closer to the table. They set up the chairs closer to the table, after that the two maids left the room. Well, last night, Sister Aurelia had a scary nightmare, I said to the little two. I had a nightmare once, and Livia came to comfort me, Aurelio said. Livia? I asked him. She is the maid of Aurelio, who always stays beside him, and my maid name is Martia, who is always beside me. Ophelia answered it. Yes, Livia always comforts me, she is very nice. Does your maid Adele comfort Sister Aurelia when Sister had a nightmare? Ophelia asked. Yes she was. Was it nice? Aurelio asked. Yes it was. Father out of the blue Aurelia, today you. The little two turned their faces to father, immediately stood up from the chair and said A-R-G-H-H-H-H, and pointed their finger to father. What? Father asked. Father is trying to steal sister Aurelia again, Aurelio said. Father has already promised that today we will have sister Aurelia, Ophelia said. Ah, right, right father answered. Ophelia, think what would have happened, if father broke his promise. Mother asked Ophelia. If father broke his promise, he would take us to stroll the city and do show, arg. Ophelia suddenly realized something and seemed to think harder about it. It seems Ophelia realized it, and what will Ophelia choose? Mother asked. What's going on Ophelia? Aurelia worried. 
My, my, asterisk giggling asterisk Aurelio doesn't realize it mother said. It is more scary that my dear asked Ophelia about my promise, it seems my dear wants it too. Well is it because we are ladies right? Of course we want it. Hey hey hey, Ophelia, what are you thinking about? Ah uh, yes, it was like yesterday, the little two had small arguments in their chair even now they were standing on the chair. Ophelia still trying to think about what was the best. Broke the father's promise or kept it, meanwhile Aurelio didn't have a clue about it, meanwhile mother and father had their own conversation, and for me. When the food arrived, and what was going on with breakfast in this family, my thought. 9. Chapter 6. After breakfast, the little two got off from their chairs, and left the room, but Ophelia stopped in front of the dining room entrance. Father, today you can have sister Aurelia, but this weekend you need to take us on a stroll to the city. Ophelia asked. He, what are you doing Ophelia? Why did you let father steal sister Aurelia? He already promised us, right? Aurelia was behind her, and worried. Ophelia just kept walking and ignored Aurelio, but Aurelio kept nagging her about it. Wee you, it is so scary, that Ophelia changed her find because about strolling and shopping in the city. Father said and turned his face to mother. My, my, maybe like you said, she inherited my general. Mother was smiling at father. Oh wah, well, scary. Father, today, what do you need me for? I asked father. Ah, uh, about that, how about we strolling to the city? Eh, will it make the little two be jealous? We sneak out from them. Is it okay? It's okay Aurelia, I have sent a message to their maids, that we will sneak out to take a stroll with you. They will try to distract them, mother said and smiling at me. What is the occasion to take me out strolling the city? About that, last night, Sophia said dreams came from memory, psychology, and the surrounding sound. Father said, and we want to use that to overcome the nightmare you had. Mother said, overcome the nightmare? We want you to know more about the world like strolling in the city, and memories of the city, and the experience you will get. Father said, we will invite Lady Octavi too. Mother said, is it better if Lady Octavi and I stroll the city? I think father has work to do, and mother maybe has something to do. Eh, father seemed nervous. Your mother is free today, Aurelia, but you can't say that to your father, right dear? Mother showed her mischievous smile to father your father has some work to do but not your mother, so I will accompany you today, right dear? No, I will accompany Aurelia too. My, my, I think Lady Laura will be angry at you, dear. Lady Laura, Aurelia, still doesn't know about Lady Laura. She is the stewardship of our family, and she is the mother of Lady Octavi. She is Lady Laura Claudie from the Claudie family. I believe Lady Octavi had told Aurelia about the relationship between Aurelia's family and Claudie family. Mother said. Yes, she had told me about that, but she didn't tell me about her family. Well, I will tell you about that. Lady Laura's responsibility is to supervise arrangements and finances, and there is Sir Caius Claudie. He is the marshal of the army. His responsibility is to maintain the army and train them, and your father's responsibility is to focus on duchy affairs, like diplomacy issues. Mother explained to me. What about mother? What is mother's responsibility? Father suddenly became so nervous, and mother's aura became different. I think you don't, need, to, know, about, it, Aurelia, father said to me with a nervous tone. Oh my, my, don't be like that dear it may make Aurelia uncomfortable. Mother showed me another mischievous smile your mother's responsibility is about intrigue. Intrigue? You can say, I have a responsibility to keep secrecy around us and gain secrets from enemies, and, with a happy smile search some rats, right dear? Yes dear. Out of the blue, a woman came to the entrance of the dining room, she had blonde hair, and she looked in forties like a mother, even in her forties she was still beautiful. HHH your grace, asterisk gasp asterisk you, asterisk gasp asterisk ae, asterisk gasp asterisk in, here, the woman said, what a coincidence, you are here. Mother said, huh? The woman was confused, let me introduce her, she is Lady Laura Claudie the stewardship, dot and Lady Laura, this is my daughter Aurelia Aurelius. Mother introduced her and me, arg. Lady Clora noticed there was me, and immediately tidied herself up nice to meet you, Lady Aurelia. She greeted me, nice to meet you, to Lady Laura. Ah yes, 
It is great that you are here, father said. What is that, your grace? Lady Laura replied. Today, I will take a leave from the office. What? She screamed apologize for my sudden scream. She cleared her throat asterisk m asterisk what is the occasion that your grace needs to take a leave today? We want to take Aurelia strolling in the city, I think it's a great excuse, right Lady Laura? We? Does it mean Madam takes a part too? She asked mother. Yes, Lady Laura, I will come with them to take a look in the city. Lady Laura took a deep breath asterisk sighing asterisk all right then, your grace can take a leave for today, but tomorrow your grace needs to catch today's work. Many thanks, Lady Laura, father said. Anne, one thing Lady Laura mother asked her if the little to ask the whereabouts of us, can you distract them or take a little bit of a lie? I thought the young master and the young lady would take part too. No they are not, it's just with Aurelia because she is under circumstances as you already know. Mother said, understand, madam, I will try my best. Last thing, can you tell your daughter that she will join us to stroll the city? Father said, my daughter? Arg. For accompanying Lady Aurelia, surely I will tell her about it. Can you tell her now? Asterisk erg asterisk right now, your grace? Yes, because we will take a leave after this. Asterisk sigh asterisk understand, your grace. You are the greatest, Lady Laura father appreciated Lady Laura. But, it did not seem to be received well in Lady Laura's ears, and she took a leave from the entrance to tell Lady Octavi. It seems Lady Laura felt upset from you, father. Upset? Why did you say that, Aurelia? Well, Aurelia has good eyes, she felt upset because your father kept troubling her. Mother said, Ah, I see. What do you mean by that, dear? You make our daughter just believe what you said. It is just the truth, dear, you kept troubling Lady Laura with your work. Did father always keep troubling Lady Laura? I asked to mother. Yes, he did and always has been, as you can see, Aurelia, your father's appearance is a sturdy person, and everyone thought about him as a competent person, right? Yes he is, mother. And how does your father talk like a competent and cool person, right? Yes he is, mother. But if it is about work, that nature changes backward, your father will become careless about his responsibility, and keep delaying all the work, that's why Lady Laura is always angry at him and she is the one who does the work at times. I see now, mother. Felt embarrassed about what the mother said right, 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 how about we take a leave now? I think Lady Laura has told her daughter, so she will wait at the entrance of the house. Father said, it's okay father, I know your feeling is embarrassing about it, but I will keep cheering for you, father. Thanks Aurelia, father just kept his cool, and left the room. After hearing that, I believe your father is so happy. But he just kept his cool, mother said. It's okay, mother, if father still can't show the feeling about that, at least, now I know more about my father from what mother told. How about we take a leave now and follow father? Mother and I left the room, in front entrance of the dining room, Adele was in there. Three of us followed father to the house's entrance. On the way I asked Adele. So, Adele gets informed about the stroll to the city. Yes, my lady, Lady Laura informed me about that. Dot I think she informed the coachman of the carriage, and she even informed her husband too. Ha 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 asterisk giggling asterisk if it is about a family trip, Lady Laura always informs everyone to ensure everything went well, she even informs her husband. She is concerned about the security too, although it is just a stroll to the city. Mother said, is that great, mother, that she cares about us, care, huh? Mother smiling, in the entrance of the house. There was Lady Octavi waiting for us. This was my first time seeing the front of the house, it was so spacious and full of gardens, in front of the house there was a roundabout, and in the center of it, there was a huge tree full of white flowers. The distance between the house and the entrance gate was a little far. There was a white carriage in front of the house, and I noticed there was the coat of arms of the family. It was hard to explain, but it was a black shield carried by the body of an eagle, but the eagle had two heads, it was the eagle's head and the lion's head. And there was the head of a snake in the middle of it, but the body of the snake wrapped around the body of an eagle. The color of the eagle's body was red and blue, where half of the eagle's body was red, and the other one was blue. The eagle's head was red, the lion's head was blue. The snake's body and head was black. The side of the emblem was brown. In the middle of the shield, 
There was a symbol like iris and pupil of eye, the pupil color was white, and on the edge of the iris color was white. In the pupil, there was a dot of white color, and made all of that like an eye. We went into the carriage, but Adele and Lady Octave I not went into the carriage. They were sitting in front of the carriage, it was on the coachman's side, so the coachman was sitting between Adele and Lady Octave I. We started the journey to the city. On the way, I saw a lot of wheat fields, sometimes there was a windmill in the middle of it. After some minutes, we arrived at the city, and there was the sign name of the city, it said Florence, I remembered from Lady Octave I said, this was the Duchy of Florence. Maybe this city was the capital of the Duchy so the name was same with the Duchy. We entered the gate of the city, all of the buildings already used roof tiles, there were buildings that used stone, and there were used wood. The main road was made like concrete blocks, the block was organized systematically so it was like there was no gap, and there was a sidewalk, Lady Octave I lowered her body to the window side of the carriage. Your Grace, where will be the first destination? 11. Chapter 7. Your Grace, where will be the first destination? Octave I asked from the coachman's side. Mum. Let's go to the town square first, we can see a lot of entertaining people there, father said. Right on, your grace. I saw Lady Octavia pass father said to the coachman, we went right on to the town square. On the way there, I saw a lot of people in the city. There were some buildings with some symbol sign on their board, there was an anvil symbol with two hammers crossed above it, a glass with some foam on the upper lips of glass, a weighing scale with an object on one side making the scales unbalanced, a fork and spoon crossed each other, and a scissor. I was so curious about these signs, so I asked mother and father. Father, mother, what's about the sign in front of some buildings? Ah, Aurelia, it shows what the building is, father answered. An anvil with two hammers crossed is a blacksmith, a glass is a tavern and inn, a weighing scale is a trade market, a fork and spoon is a restaurant. And a scissor is a salon and tailor or boutique. Mother said, I see. And there was a unique and more complex sign than other signs. It was a person riding a horse with a sort of banner in his hand and a sword in his other hand. And what about that sign? It is more unique and complex than other signs. That sign, it is an army insignia. Father said, insignia, or you can call it the army sign. That sign you saw is a cataphract unit. Cataphract. It is a mensatum unit, where it is an armored heavy cavalry, and it is our best unit. Is there another building like that? Yes there is, I think you don't need to be concerned about it. After some minutes of riding and seeing a lot on the road, finally we reached the town square. It was so spacious, there was a statue of a long-haired woman with a half-wing in her back. There were a lot of people, some performers, and some street merchants. There was a juggler who jungling anything that people threw at him a singer who sang some romantic poem, a troberitz who composed a rhythm and melody with the singer beside her. Aurelia, you can stroll around with Lady Octavi and Adele. Your mother and I have something to do. Father said, sure, father. Mother and father went alone to somewhere on foot leaving us behind, there was no one who followed or escorted them. We were strolling around the town square, first I went to the statue and wanted to look closer. I realized it was so tall until I was in front of it, I assumed it was three times the height of Lady Octavi. Who is she, Lady Octavi? She is Genia. Genia? She is one of the goddesses from the gods' realm, she is the most timid goddess, and other gods and goddesses stamped her as the weakest among the gods and goddesses. Why does she have one wing in her backpack instead of two wings? Because of the incompetence of her being a goddess, Adele suddenly spoke. Well there is a lot of meaning from the wing, and there is some people believe about it was the sign of the weak and the incompetent of Genia. And there is some people believe it was the sign about the freedom of Genia. Genia is the timid goddess, so she usually does not hang around with other gods and goddesses. It means she never does some of the sins of all the gods and the goddesses do. She still be pure as white, and she is the most freedom goddess in God's realm, where she usually visits the human realm and playing in there, instead in God's realm. Because she usually transformed into a human, her wings paid the price of the transformation, she lost one of the wings, Lady Octave I explained. So is there any reason for this statue here? Because she usually came to this city, when she went to the human realm, that's why there is a statue in here. After some took a look at the statue, we went strolling around the town center, we watched the juggler juggling anything from the people throwing anything to him. He juggled bags, balls, and hats. 
the sound of melody and rhythm attracted me. I went to it and saw it was two girls around seventeens, one was the singer and one was the composer. What is the thing that emits a sound in that girl's shoulder? Oh, that's a veal, and she is a Troberitz. Troberitz. Troberitz is a girl or woman who plays instruments to compose a poem. If it's a man or boy it is called troubadours. We were enjoying the performance by the two girls until they finished the performance. After it finished, the singer started to walk around with a small bag in her hand, and people started to give a spare coin to the bag. I didn't bring any coins. Do you bring any coins, Adele? Of course, my lady. Let me give them the coins, my lady, it is your first time to stroll around here. Lady Octave I said. The girl in front of us, and I saw the Lady Octave I gave some white coins to the small bag. I saw the girl's face unbelieve what she received. Our eyes met each other, and she lifted her skirt and greeted me, making everyone's eyes look at us. I was just smiling at her. The other girl saw what was going on and went to us, and she lifted her skirt and greeted me too. I just waved at them, and started to leave the scene. They waved back at me. I asked Lady Octavi what was going on. What Lady Octavi give to them until they greeted at us? I just gave them eight silver coins. How precious that is. Let's see, the average in cost for a day is 10 copper coins with three meals, and the luxury in cost for a day is 40 copper coins with one meals. And one silver is about 100 copper coins, so eight silver coins equals 800 copper coins, 800 copper coins equal 80 days in average in with three meals, is it not enough, my lady? I can give them the gold coins if my lady wants. I think it's enough, but is it okay for Lady Octavi to give that much coins? What are you talking about, my lady? Silver coins have no meaning for us. Eh. I was unbelieved what she said. Let's ask Adele how many coins his grace and madam gave for you my lady, Adele how many coins his grace and madam gave for this occasion. It is about 50 platinum coins, Adele answered. What are the values of those coins? The lowest one is copper, silver, gold, and platinum. One platinum coin equals 100 gold coins, one gold coin equals 100 silver coins, one silver coin equals 100 copper coins. So one platinum equals 100 gold coins or 10.000 silver coins or 1.000.000 copper coins. And Adele has 50 platinum coins, Lady Octavi explained. Eh, why did father and mother give me so many of those coins? I think it's just small things for them, Lady Octavi said. Eh, small things? That much coins is a small thing. Yes, it is. Yeah. We continued strolling around the town square. Now, we went to the street merchant. I saw a lot of pendants, hair clips, and many ornaments in the ground in front of the merchants. I looked around at them. Suddenly, I heard a noise behind me. I saw Adele grab a little boy back who passed behind her. The boy was around Aurelio's age and had shabby and dirty clothes. I felt a little hand itching my hips, and I found the little hand of it. Adele said while lifting the little boy with one hand. The boy kept struggling in the air release me. Release me, who, there was someone who tried to steal from us. Lady Octave I said with a scary face and her hand redded in his sword. The boy's face was so scared and he wanted to start crying. What are we gonna do with him, my lady? First, lower him from your hand. Adele lowered him and started to release the boy from her hand. Suddenly, the boy started to run, but Adele's fast hand could grab him before he ran. He was still trying to run while Adele was grabbing him. Oi, little boy. Are you dare to run from Emmy Adele with a scary tone said to the boy. Wah, wah. The boy started to whine. I went in front of the boy, lowered my body, started to calm him down. What's your name? I said, I don't have it. You don't have a name? I think he is from the street, my lady, where some of the people threw their kids to the street, so they don't have any name, or know their own name. Adele said, Ha, what a horrible thing to do. Wait, my lady, I think that kind of street is gone, so there are no kids living in the streets anymore. Why oh boy are you trying to lie? Lady Octave I said, Eh, hey, hey, hey. no I am not lying to you, I am living in the streets. So why are you stealing from us? I said, because we haven't eaten for two days. We? What do you mean about that? There are my little sisters. You have little sisters, they are but they don't have any blood related to me, they are just like me, thrown by parents in the street. So you took care of them, and protected them, 
what a brave boy, the boy was blushing, can you show me where you stay and I want to meet with your little sisters, what are you going to do with us, are you going to sell us, of course not, I just want to see where are you staying, do you mind, okay, then you can come, that's amazing, Lady Octavia came to me and whispered at me, are you sure about this, my lady, I whispered back it's okay, I said to him okay, boy, she will release you, but you must not run, and lead us to where you stay, all right, Adele, you can release the boy, Adele released the boy, and the boy was well behaved, he was not running from us, he started to lead us to the street he came from, the place was a little bit far from the town square, and it passed some weird and dark alley far from the public, we arrived at the street where he lived, it was in the cramped and dirty street, and I didn't see any little girls in there, I don't see your little sisters in here, boy, I said, the boy put his fingers in his mouth, and started to blow it, making the sound of whistling, suddenly, three little girls came from the dark corner, we went there, and saw a lot of papers in the ground, it seemed they were used as their mattress, the three little girls had brown hairs, and brown eyes, the boy had black hair and black eyes, 9, chapter 8, the three girls were scared about our presence around them, and the boy tried to calm them down, I walked behind him, and started to approach the girls closer, I got down and talked to the girls, what's your name, little girls, I asked them, they just shook their heads, the boy answered for them, they don't have names like me, my, I was surprised since when do they live in the streets, I don't know since when, but I found them in the streets, so I brought them here, the boy answered, I put my hand to his head and started to pat him what a kind and amazing boy you are, the boy was blushing with my pat, I stood up, and turned my face to Adil and Lady Octavi, this type of case where children are being neglected on the street, is it common here, I asked them, I saw that their faces seemed hard to answer, I believe not, my lady, it is so rare for children to be neglected on the street, it's almost impossible, Lady Octavi answered, Back then, Lady Octavia said that kind of street is gone, so there is no kid living in the street anymore why can you say that, because it is what it is, my lady, his grace, my lady father, has fixed this problem, fixed, how did my father do that, I believed his grace provided a foster care and orphanage for these children, foster care and orphanage, his grace built some orphanages in this duchy to take care of these children, what about foster care? His grace built some training centers for people who want to treat these children, and become their foster parents, so these people were trained and capable to take care of these children in their home or in the orphanages, if my father did all of that, why are there still four children being neglected in front of me right now, that is the one I didn't know, my lady, what if there are more children in the streets than these four children, I asked and tried to cool my composure from being angry, I think it's impossible, my lady, but it's possible too, I will talk with my father later about this matter, but right now, what are we going to do with these four children, I think it's good for them if we take them to the orphanages, I was thinking about it for some moments, no, I want to bring them home, Lady Octavia and Adele's faces were surprised, my lady, is my lady's act little selfish, Adele said, little selfish, what do you mean about it Adele, ha, huh? I know, my lady is worrying about these children, but to take them, I think it's a little selfish of my lady, surely my lady wants to save all the children in the streets, taking them is not the answer my lady, what happens if there are eight children, will my lady take them all, so what are you suggesting about this matter, Adele, like Lady Octave I said, it's better if we take them to the orphanages, orphanages, I know it will be great, when I heard what Lady Octave I explained about it, but to see four children in front of me, I ask myself, why did my father's plan about this matter fail, I believe his grace's plan will not fail, my lady, Lady Octavi said, yes it will not fail, Lady Octavi, but once more, I will ask you from this mouth, why are there four children in front of me, suddenly I felt a little bit emotional and angry inside me, Lady Octavi's face showed fear a b, o u t, t h a, t Lady Octavi stuttered with her words and couldn't face at me I'm Aphrodite, I don't, no, W, even a Claudi family member cannot answer it to a person who they swear allegiance to. For some no reason, I said that. My lady, I think it's inappropriate to talk like that to Lady Octavi, Adele said. For some no reason, my body walked closer to Adele, 
in her face so how must I talk to my subject who swear their allegiance to me? Her aid, Lady Octave I tried to separate me from Adele. Forgive my words, my lady, but they swear their allegiance not to my lady, but to his grace, and Lady Octave I just got ordered by his grace to take care of my lady. So she is still not your subject, my lady, Adele said. Lady Octave I was surprised by what Adele said. It felt like I could not control my body and my mouth. I grabbed Lady Octavia's hand in my chest who tried to separate me with Adele, and threw her hand. I moved closer to Adele until my face was in front of her. I blinked my eyes, and suddenly in front of me was just Lady Octavia on kneeled lean it at her sword, her clothes were in a mess, and there was some bruise on her face. Her hair was in disarray. I turned my back to the children, and I saw Adele hug them, Adele's clothes were in a mess too, and there was some bruise on her face too. What was just hap, I felt sucked out from the world, and black force came to my vision. I heard Lady Octave I kept calling me, and suddenly, that calling was gone. You, are an interesting mortal, but, who, and what, are, you, I don't, recall, that, there, is, a, interesting, mortal, like, you, you, are, worthy, to, be, oversee, by, me, mortal. I opened my eyes, and suddenly there was a headache in my head. I looked around, I was in my bedroom, and it was already night. I tried to get up. When I got up from laying down, I saw Adele was sitting on the couch in front of my bed, and our eyes met, suddenly she was surprised, and made a haste to leave the room. Adele's face seems fine right now, I tried to recall what was happening. I believe in that street, I saw Lady Octavia and Adele's got some bruises on their face and their clothes. After that my vision was gone, suddenly I remembered something, I heard some voices in blank vision, I tried to remember what I heard from it, but it hurt my head. After some moments, I saw there was father, mother, Sophia, and Adele rushed to my bed. Mother was the first to hug me my Aurelia, you finally awake. I saw there were tears in her eyes. I am alright, mother, are you sure, darling? Of course, can I know what was going on? You were unconscious, Aurelia father said. I was unconscious. Yes, you are, Aurelia. Can you recall what was going on before you were unconscious? Mother said. I was in the street, and met four children. Ah yes, what about the children? Are they all right? The children are all right, right now they are in the servants quarter, mother said. It's a relief that the children are all right. Can you continue your story? Father asked. Right, after met four children. I had a discussion with Adele and Lady Octavia about what happened with the children. I made up my mind to take the children, but Adele and Lady Octavia prevented me from doing that, and we exchanged words about it. Suddenly I blinked my eyes, Lady Octavia already kneeled on the ground with some bruises, and Adele was behind me hugging the children and she had some bruises too. After that I felt sucked out from the world, and a blank vision came to me. Do you not remember what was happening? Why could Lady Octavia kneeled on the ground? Mother said, I can't recall anything about that. Adele and Lady Octavia told me that you lost your control, and they saw you like your mother, father said. Like mother? Yes, your mother is so scary, if she loses cont, father said. Mother turned her face to father and smiled I think it's exaggerating that I am scary, when I lost control. But Adele and Lady Octavia recalled Aurelia in back then like madam, right Adele? Father turned his face to Adele. Adele didn't answer it and turned her face to somewhere. M, in other words, you could not remember anything about why Lady Octavia kneeled on the ground. Father said, Yes, I am, may I know what happened there? You lost your composure, Aurelia, and made Lady Octavia and Adele hurt, Mother said. How could I hurt Lady Octavia and Adele? I saw Mother and Father trying to avoid the answer. There is time, your father, and I will tell you, right now it's better for you not to know. Mother said, but I had just hurt Lady Octavia and Adele, I want to know how I could hurt them, I believe there is time for you to know, but not now, it's better if you are getting better first. Mother said and there is Sophia in here, she will examine your condition. Sophia walked forward beside Mother. Hello my lady, we meet again. Hello to you too, Sophia. Can I examine your condition, my lady? Sure. Mother went back and Sophia was sitting beside me, she examined me like checking my pulse, my temperature, and my tongue. Does my lady have something bothering you? Bothering me? Yes, when my lady was unconscious, is there any memory, any feeling, or anything that my lady experienced, 
while in blank vision. I don't recall anything like that happening while I was unconscious. Right, if, but I felt there was something weird about me today. Weird? Yes, when I exchanged words with Adele and Lady Octavi back then, it seemed I could not control my body and my mouth. So what my lady did back then was out of control of my lady, and my lady's words too. Yes, and while I was unconscious, I felt there was a voice emitting in my head. Was that voice Lady Octavi calling my lady? No, I didn't recognize the voice. I saw everyone's faces were surprised. My lady didn't recognize this voice, and what was this voice emitting had to my lady head? I cannot remember all of it, but I believe there was a word mortal that was emitting in my head. It seemed Sophia was shocked about it. Mortal. It was weird to hear while in unconscious. Does Sophia know about this? I asked, her mum. I saw mother's hand tapping Sophia's shoulder. I am sorry, my lady, that I don't understand and know about the voice that was emitting in my lady's head, don't worry, I will try to find out about it. My lady, may I excuse myself to search about this matter, my lady? Sure, you can excuse yourself. Sophia excused herself and left the room, mother was sitting beside me. Aurelia, you need to take a rest right now. Mother, do the little two know about this matter? No, they don't know, when you were brought back to the house, their maids distracted them to bring them in the garden, so they didn't know about this matter. It's a relief then, don't think too much, just take a rest, father said. Yes, just take a rest, darling, mother said and kissed my forehead. Mother stood up from beside me, they were walking toward the door. Wait. Adele I said to Adele, what's the matter, my lady? I want to say, I'm sorry that I hurted you back then. It's okay, my lady, it was my fault too that I couldn't control my words to my lady. It's my fault, Adele, so I'm sorry, no my. I think there is no one fault here, it was just an incident where everyone got hurted. Mother intervened just take a rest Aurelia and don't overthink about this matter, good night. They left the room and closed the door. I backed to lay down in bed and tried to sleep. But I couldn't fall asleep. I kept overthinking about what had happened back then. You cannot fall asleep, huh? An unknown voice came from in front of the bed. I got up from laying in the bed. Who are you? And where are you? I asked, Mum I wonder who I am. I took a look in front of me, and I saw a figure in front of me. I tried to focus on that figure. 7. Chapter 9. You cannot fall asleep, huh? An unknown voice came from in front of the bed. I got up from laying in the bed. Who are you? And where are you? I asked, Mum I wonder who I am. I took a look in front of me, and I saw a figure in front of me. I tried to focus on that figure. Don't try to focus on me because, dash. I was surprised when I could focus on that figure. I don't have any appearance, it said. I just saw a bright white human figure without any appearance. What are you? I asked, Who, you changed the question from who to what, after you saw me. It came closer to me every step from it closer to me, made me so anxious until it reached beside me, and it leaned in front of my face. You are an interesting one, it said. Suddenly, I saw a dark smile in it faceless face, made me freak out and wanted to scream of fear. Immediately the figure shut my mouth with its hand, I kept struggling to let its hand off me. Just relax, don't be scared of me, I'm here not hurting you. For some no reason, suddenly I felt so relaxed. After that it released its hand from my mouth. So, what are you? What are you doing in my room? The figure walked out from me, and toward the center of the room. I'm here, because I just want to look you closer and observe you a little bit. Look at me. And observe me. What are you talking about? Mum, dot maybe, the figure slowly disappeared into thin air hope we meet again, because my time is going up, Aurelia or ought. The figure was gone without a trace in front of me. What the hell was happening? And what was that figure? I laid back down in the bed it said to look closer at me and observe me. What did it mean? What is it going to do to me? I tried not to overthink about it, and closed my eyes. In these six days had been passed, nothing happened. The nightmare never came back in these six days, even Sophia kept asking me if the nightmare came back or not, I just answered it. My dream was about strolling in the city, when my mother and father invited me. The voice that emitted inside my head did not come back too, and Sophia kept asking about that too, the important one was the figure, it never came back to meet me again even if it said hope to meet me again. For six days, first I apologized to Lady Octavi for hurting them, 
and she kept saying that it was her fault, and I just learnt about anything from Lady Octavi, I was aware of how the calendar worked. It used any or new era, right now it was on 754 any, a year consisted of 12 months with each month consisting of 30 days. The condition of the four children was better, right now, they worked as servants in my household, they lived in servants' quarters with other servants. When they were introduced to the little two, immediately the little two were really well accepted. The oldest boy was named Felix, he was the same age as Aurelio. The girls were named Elia, Alicia and Alesha, and they were triplet, because they were identical to each other, they were given an accessories ribbon. The triplets put the ribbon on different places from each other, Elia put the ribbon in her chest, Alicia put the ribbon in her neck, and Alesha put her ribbon in her hair, Alelia's ribbon color was green because her personality was more mature than the other two. Alicia's ribbon color was blue because her personality was more calm and possessive than the other two. And Alesha's ribbon color was red because her personality was more active and more courage than other two. They were six years old. In these six days, the little two's behavior changed, they didn't come to me anymore, but they played with these four children, Aurelia was friends with Felix. Even Aurelio asked father to invite Felix to train with a sword, Ophelia, was friends with the three girls, but sometimes Alesha went to Aurelio and Felix when they trained sword, and asked to join the train, father granted it. The four children were being educated in the same class with little two in the household. Elia was more active about knowledge, Alesha was more active about sword, Alicia was more active about something, Felix was more active about knowledge and sword. In my sleep, suddenly I was feeling heavy in my body, I slowly opened my eyes, there were the little two above me, wh, at, are, uh, yo, you, doing? I asked while half awake, Sister Aurelia, you need to wake up now. Aurelio said, yes, you need to wake up now. Ophelia said with a loud voice, their hands kept pushing my body, suddenly I saw the door was opened, it was Adele, Livia, and Martia with the four children. Livia and Martia rushed to the little two, and lifted them out of me, while being lifted, they grumbled about it, I got up from bed, Adele drew open the curtains of the balcony, I turned my face to the little two, why are you so early in my room, and suddenly above me, because, today, it's so important, so we woke up early, and immediately went to sister Aurelia room, wanted to, wake, sister, up, Ophelia said, today is an important day, Yes, it is, it's the day where father fulfills his promise, invite us to stroll the city, Aurelio said with a cheerful tone. All right, it's today, so do you two also invite them too? I pointed to the four children. Of course, we are, Aurelio said. That's great, but, but, what, sister Aurelia? Ophelia said, you two have said father was a cunning person right? What if father is lying to you, today? and not inviting us to stroll the city, the little two's faces suddenly changed from happy to sad, and immediately they ran out the room, followed by Livia, Martia with the four children, it's hard for Livia and Martia to keep the movement of the little two, I said to Adil, I think it's because you, my lady, told a young master and young lady a nonsense about his grace, and made them afraid about it, well, when I saw them lately, it felt like I wanted to tease them a little bit more, is it because my lady felt lonely, they have friends and not annoyed my lady anymore for playing with you, he 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 he, maybe I feel like that, it's time for my lady to do the morning routine, right, I stood up from the bed, I walked to the vanity table, and Adele started the morning routine for maintaining my face, in the middle of it, I saw from the mirror the door was opened, and the little two appeared, immediately came to me, father said he will fulfill the promise today, even he told lady Laura to prepare it, Aurelio said, that's great, I said, with Adele kept doing to maintain my face. After some moments, I saw Livia and Martia come to my room with some heavy breathing, it must be hard for them to keep these two. You two, need to control and behave yourself. I said to little two, what are you talking about? Ophelia said, I pointed my hand to Livia and Martia you make Livia and Martia tired in the early morning, because you two, it's alright, my lady. Livia said to me with her trying to hide her heavy breathing. Yes, it's a usual thing for us Martia said, trying to relieve herself. See, Sister Aurelia, they are fine. Ophelia said, Heh, even though they said fine, 
you guys need to control yourself and pay attention to the people around you. I said, we know, Sister Aurelia. They answered, great, how about you two wait for me in the dining room for breakfast? Yes, sister. I saw them like they wanted to run toward the door. No running, just walking to the dining room. Yes, sister. They answered it like they grumbled about it. I saw them from the mirror, they were walking toward the door followed by Livia and Martia, but, dot in front of the door, they started to run, before Livia closed the door. What the, they're doing? I felt a little angry. They are children overall, it's normal for them to be active. Adele said, it's great to be active, but I feel more like them if they are well behaved in certain conditions. Right, Adele said. After some minutes, Adele finished it, and we immediately went to the dining room. In the dining room, I saw the little two already sitting in their seats for the entire breakfast. I ignored the little two, even though they talked to me, I just grumbled and ignored them. After breakfast, father, mother, little two and I went to the entrance of the house followed by Adele, Livia, Martia and the four children behind us. On the way there, the little two kept talking to me and asked why, I just kept ignoring them. In front of the house, there was Lady Octavia and Lady Laura waiting for us with five guards. Lady Laura already prepared six horses and two carriages, one carriage was for father, mother, Lady Laura, and I inside, the other carriage was for the little two and the four children inside, Adele was in my carriage coachman seat, Livia and Martia were in other carriage coachman seat, Lady Octavia and other guards rode the horses. After everyone was ready, we went to the city with Lady Octavia on her horse, two guards on each side of the carriage on their horses, and one guard in the back of the carriage with his horse. On the way to the city, mother and father seemed curious about something from me. Aurelia, why did you ignore the little two this morning? Mother asked. Hum. Because they were against my advice. Advice? Father asked. In the early morning, they were so active, running around, and made Livia and Martia feel so tired so I told them to control themselves, and told them to walk toward the dining room, but when they were in front of my room, they just ran, well they are children, so they are more active and more rebellious. Father asked, apart from that, why did Lady Laura come with us to the city? I asked, because there is something I need to do in the city as a substitute for his grace. Lady Laura answered, so father didn't do his job well, made Lady Laura a substitute for him. I looked at my father, you are so mean, Aurelia, Lady Laura became a substitute for me because you guys, I will be with you guys in the city, so I cannot do my job if I am with you, so Lady Laura became a substitute for me. Father answered, well, I love it if father does the job then with us the entire time in the city, father felt unhappy from what I said, and why are there some guards for us to go into the city, is it because there are the little two and four children? I asked, M. It's not because of that, Aurelia. Mother said it's because the event happened to you when we went to the city, it happened because of our neglect, so we want some guards to oversee us, if we are not in there with you guys. I don't know if father and mother are so worried about me, I will try to calm down as much as possible, I said. Just don't overthink about it, Aurelia, just have as much fun as you want in the city especially you need to make up with your siblings, and have fun with them, mother said. I will try to do that. I said, 7, chapter 10, we arrived at the square of the city, and we made a scene on the spot, with two carriages and five horses, surely it made people stare and make a scene, but it was not, the people did not make a scene about it, when I wanted to get out of the carriage, suddenly in front of the door there were already the little two, waiting for me, with some sorrowful faces looking at me, I tried not to look at them, and kept walking out from the carriage, but my shoulder was patted by my mother behind me, I looked at mother behind me, and saw her smiling at me, it felt like my mother wanted me to make up with them, after everyone and I was on the ground, the little two were in front of me immediately with mother and father behind me, asterisk sigh asterisk is there anything that you two want from me, they heard it and they contemplated it, we want to say something, sister Aurelia, what is that, we want to, they looked at each other, seemed to be trying to throw each other, who wanted to say it, what are you two gonna say to me, for some reason, people around us stared at us. Asterisk sigh asterisk can you two say it fast? Before we make a scene here, the little two just kept silent in front of me. 
You know, that you two who want to stroll in the city, and right now, you are just standing in front of me, you said you want to say something, hear your sister in front of you, and you two just keep silent, do you two really want to stroll in the city or just want to stand here all day, how about this, for no reason I keep talking at them I can do both, I can stand in here all day until you two say what you want to say, because it is not me who want to go out, it is you two who ask father to go out, and in here, you two wasted it, because you two cannot say it to your own sister, even she in front of you, for no reason, I felt similar inside me your father has prepared all of it from carriages, and guards, even he spared his time for us, and so we can be in here, and here I am stuck in front of my two little siblings, who cannot say something to me, the feeling was more boiling inside me, and for no reason my face was in front of their face hey, is your sister really scary in my sweet little siblings view, it's not scary right? If it is, your sister will be so sad, but it will be even more sad if her sweet little siblings cannot say something even when she is in front of her sweet little siblings. Suddenly I felt there were two hands on my shoulders. I looked at it, and it was mother, but my arms felt tightened. I looked around me. There was Lady Octavia and Adele beside me. For some reason they gripped my arms, for some reason I didn't realize their presence, and I turned my face at the little two. They were so scared. Mother turned my body to face her, and pulled my head in front of her face Aurelia. Remember they are your little siblings, grip your emotions and keep your composure, surely I ask you to make up with them, but it doesn't mean like this, she said with a worried tone. Huh? I didn't know what had happened. Livia and Martia took Aurelio and Ophelia to father, away from us. For some reason without my knowing, people around me were unbelieved and scared. Can mother let it go your hands from my head? please. I asked mother. No, until you are calm, she said. I am already calm, mother. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Can you lower your hands? And mother lowered her hands from my head, but Lady Octavia and Adele gripped still in my arms. Can you lower your grips? They lowered their hands from my arms. On the contrary, their hands were in my two hands, and they were holding my hands. What I mean lower, it's not like this, it means to take it off from my arms. I said, they will keep holding your hands, until we get home, mother said. What? I was surprised is it a little too embarrassing for me? No, it's not. But, two people holding my hand seems too much, how is one person holding my hand? No, they will hold your hands, no matter what will happen. Asterisk I asterisk right. I tried to shake their grip from up and down, left and right, pull and push, their grip was so strong, it could not let it go. I apologize, my lady, but it is an order from madam, so I must obey it. Adele said, yeah. I looked at father, Lady Laura seemed to whisper something to father, and immediately Lady Laura made an excuse for herself to do work as a substitute of father. We continued the stroll in the city. After what had happened, the little two kept their distance from me, even the four children too. On the way, father was with the little two and four children, and mother kept beside me. Three guards followed us, and two guards stayed to oversee the carriages and the horses. In the square, we watched some performers, even the last Trobarits and the singer when I came here. Were in the square to perform, I saw the little two and the four children from behind. Were so entertained by all the performers in the square, and I saw father gave coin more generosity to the singer and the Trobarits than us when we were here. Afterwards, we walked in the streets toward our first destination, and it was a boutique with some fancy design, it had a glass of window, where glass was so expensive and it was classified as luxury items, when I heard it from Lady Octavi from the tutoring, I was amazed by it, because the house was full of glass of window, I looked around the street where the store was, there was no store that used glass beside this store, all the stores didn't use the glass as a window, they just used wooden shutters, the guards stayed outside, and we stepped our foot to the boutique, and mother and Ophelia changed suddenly, they immediately charged the clerks, and asked about these and those clothes that were in the store, in the meantime, father already took a seat on the bench inside of the store, it seemed he was already used to this situation, because it was my first time at the store, I was walking and looking around in the store, all the dresses and clothes were so fancy, because there was nothing to tell the price, so I went to one of the clerks and asked about the prices, she asked me to follow her, she led me to every row of dress and clothes, and started to tell the prices, 
and I was dumbfounded and unbelieved from what the clerk said about the prices. There were eight rows of dresses and clothes, these rows grouped because of the material, and the motif of the dress and clothes, the most expensive of material was silk, followed by linen, cotton, and wool, and there were four rows where all the dresses and clothes were not produced locally, and grouped with the material it used. The most expensive rows were from these four rows where the products were not produced locally, and grouped with the material it used. The other four rows where the products were produced locally by the women in their household. The price was so expensive, the cheapest row was with a silver coin price tag, and the most expensive row was with a platinum coin price tag. The dresses and clothes used with silk worth gold coin minimum, if it was not local, it was worth platinum coin. I saw mother in the four rows not locally, meanwhile, Ophelia was in the local rows, and they were in the silk row, for some reason. I wasn't interested in all the dresses and clothes in the store, so I took a seat on the bench with father, Aurelio and four children were with Ophelia followed by Livia and Martia. So it just father and I with Lady Octavia and Adol holding my both hands on the bench. I saw father was so surprised when I sat on the bench, then looked around. I was more surprised about Lady Octavia, where she usually wore a nightdress more like a man's attire than a woman's attire. Lady Octavia, are you not interested in dress or clothes? I asked her. I am not that interested in that, and I am more interested in you, my lady. She answered, right. I turned my gaze to Adele how about you, Adele? Are you not interested, like Lady Octavia, I am more interested in you, my lady, than clothes, right? I saw father beside Adele, giggling, made me turn my gaze to him. How about father? Are you not interested too, like Adele and Lady Octave? Seemed he tried to hold on without giggling with a cool face father is more interested in you, than clothes, father was giggling in the end. I felt teased by all of them and I saw mother from a distance, she was walking toward me with a woman beside her. After mother was in front of me with a woman beside her what are you doing sitting in here, Aurelia, she said. I am just sitting with father. Father was still emitted small giggling, mother turned a small gaze to him, and immediately father stopped it. You cannot sit around here with your father, you will follow me with this lady, she said. Who is she, mother? She is the owner of this store and she will be trying to find the dresses that suit you with her workers. But, as you can see mother, I showed my two hands in front of mother where Lady Octavia and Adele were still holding it with these, can I wear or try a dress? I heard a small giggling from father, again mother turned a small gaze to him, and he immediately stopped again. There is no excuse, Aurelia, you will come with her, and mother will follow to watch you. For a sudden, Lady Octavia and Adele were standing, making me stand too. Mother and the owner walked out from the bench, Lady Octavia and Adele followed them. I tried not to follow them, but their grip was so strong, it made me forcefully just follow them. They led me to the corner of the store, where there was a big mirror, there was a table and chair with some drinks and snacks, where mother was sitting in there. While she was watching me, there were three workers beside the owner, they measured my size of my body, and other workers went out to take dresses who seemed suit for me and they brought an entire row of dresses, and they brought a fitting rooms, where it was curtain circling with big diameter who could fit two to three people inside the circle. They started to dress me all the dresses inside the fitting rooms, where Lady Octavia and Adele switched up holding hands. When the worker tried to dress me because the grip disturbed it, when I held Adele, I thought her grip weaker than Lady Octavia, but I tried to pull the grip. It didn't make a single flinch. Forcefully, I gave up. They dressed me with various dresses, after they dressed me, the curtains were opened, and showed it to mother with the owner standing beside her, mother just kept whispering to the owner, every time she looked at the dress in me, after some dresses, suddenly the spectators in front of the curtains increase, there was father, the four children and the little two followed by their maids, there was one table and two chair more for the little two, and father sat with mother, when they showed me to them, they started to discuss it with each other, while I was standing in front of them with some snacks and drinks on their tables. 6. Chapter 11 After I finished trying all the dresses they brought, I sat at the chair where mother sat with father in front of me. Mother was still busy shopping, now it was the little two turns to try on the dresses. But they did that not in the same place as me, they did it at the other corner of the store, where it was close to the children's section. We still could see them from a distance. The clerks brought a new tea set for me, and new snacks for me, 
the tea set that mother used, they took it from the table. Immediately, Adele poured some tea in it, because of all the commotion of trying on dresses, I felt a little bit thirsty and hungry. Can you two let my hands go? I want to drink that tea. I asked Lady Octavia and Adele who were beside me, still holding my hands. Adele said no, we can't do that, my lady, but I can bring the cup to you, so you can take a sip of it, she brought the cup in front of my mouth with her right hand. I felt so thirsty, so I took a sip of the cup. Lady Octave I said how about some snacks, my lady? After I took a sip from the cup, Lady Octave I brought the cookie in front of my mouth with her left hand. I took a bite of it, because I was hungry, I was munching it while frowning my cheeks. Lady Octave I said how about another one, my lady? She kept bringing the cookies in front of my mouth, I kept taking a bite of it, and munching it with frowning cheeks. While munching it, I took a glance at father, and saw him smiling big at me. I asked with munching asterisk munch asterisk why are asterisk munch asterisk you smiling like that asterisk munch asterisk, father, it's just cute to see you being spoiled by them, asterisk gulp asterisk how about my dear father, tell them to let go of their hands. I changed my face to smile more at him, me? Tell them to do that, no way, why, because your mother, who ordered them, not me, Lady Octave I kept putting cookies in front of my mouth. But asterisk munch asterisk you are my father asterisk munch asterisk. But, I cannot do that, Aurelia, because your mother. How about her asterisk munch asterisk asterisk munch asterisk. We looked at mother from a distance. She will be angry at me, if I order them to let go of their hands from you. But this cute daughter asterisk munch asterisk is so helpless with asterisk munch asterisk asterisk munch asterisk this holding hands. Asterisk munch asterisk asterisk munch asterisk am I better than the mother angry asterisk munch asterisk. Oh my daughter, you don't know how scary your mother I suddenly mother took a glance fiercely at us. Asterisk gulp asterisk asterisk gulp asterisk. I took my face near to father. I whispered what was that, father. Did she hear it? That is your mother, Aurelia. He whispered back it's better not to talk about her now. Right. There was no conversation between us. It was just me eating the snacks with help from Lady Octavi, and taking a sip of tea with help from Adele, and father just smiling at me, enjoying my condition. At some moment, I caught mother talking with the little two, and they suddenly went off like they were finding something. A few minutes later, they came back to mother, and immediately mother turned her gaze at me, it seemed she ordered them something. Suddenly they came to me, in front of me, they were being shy, they were hiding their hands behind them. I didn't want to speak a single word to them. Sister, Oral, I Aurelio said with a shy tone. I ignored it. They looked at each other. They said simultaneously we, here, wanted, to give, you something. I said give me something. They looked and nodded at each other, and showed their hands in front of me. I saw it was a white hairpin and a necklace with white gems. These are our presents to you, sister. Ophelia said, these presents are our apology to you, sister. Aurelio said, so we apologize about what we did, and hope sister Aurelia can forgive us. They said, I said Adele, put your hand on Aurelio's head, she put her hand on his head, and started to rub him, Adele rubbed Aurelio's head as you can see, mother ordered them to hold my hands until we get home, so I ordered Adele to do this, to show how, happy, I am, that my little siblings can realize what they have done, and ask forgiveness, their faces suddenly became happy. What about me? Ophelia said. I ordered Adele to do that to Ophelia too. You can put your presents on the table. They put the presents on the table, and hugged me. After that they were walking toward mother, and hugged her. Is that great? Father said with a big smile on his face. I ignored him and asked Adele can you keep these presents until we get home? Of course, Adele answered. After an hour, we finished shopping. Mother just bought me an entire row of dresses when I didn't know if it was suitable for me or not, but it was suitable from mother's point of view. Because of the amount of what we bought, the owner said they would send all the purchases to the home. We continued to walk in the street. I didn't know where mother and father would take us next. In the street, I saw the little two in front with father holding hands, and seemed genuinely happy about today. From a distance, I could see a huge building, where the building was above a platform made of concrete, so there were two stairs in corners to get to the buildings. Because of my curiosity about building, I asked mother who was beside me. Mother, what is that building? That's the temple. Temple? 
Are we going in there? Yes we are, Aurelia. In front of the platforms, I realized how tall it was, ten times taller than my height. I saw father tell the little two something in front of me, and after that, the little two went off from the buildings with the two guards, their maids, and the four children. Seeing that, I went to father. Where do those two go? I just told them to go have fun in the city. If it's like that, I will come with them. I went away from father, and tried to come with them, but the holding hands restrained me from going with them. My mother was smiling mischievously, even my father was smiling too. Mother came beside father. I turned my face to both of them asterisk I asterisk let me guess, mother and father want me to go to the temple. Looked at Lady Octavia and Adele and ordered you to restrain me from going anywhere. Forgive me, but it is madam who ordered us to do this. Adele said. Right, I looked at father and mother asterisk I asterisk so what's the occasion for me to go there? Even mother's smile became scarier than before, there must be something you two hiding from me. My! Was I smiling? Yes, you are, mother, and it was scarier than before. It must be my habit to smile, and it made me smile accidentally. Dot but you are so mean, Aurelia, my smile is not that scary, right dear? Mother smiling at father. Father said with a nervous tone yes, mother's smile is beautiful, Aurelia, it's so mean. Dot to say that her smile is scary. Asterisk I asterisk ha ha, just let's go to the temple and make this as fast as possible if you don't want to tell me the reason why we are here. I went to the stairs, Lady Octavia and Adele followed me, so I could move to the stairs, mother and father followed behind me, after we reached the top of the platform, I was magnified by the building, it was so huge, the building was surrounded by a lot of columns, and it was super mega huge, tall, and spacious, there was a building on each side of it, and it was surrounded with columns too, I saw there were a lot of statues, on the edge of the entrance platform there were six statues of women as tall as me with different poses, and there were three statues above the building. Who is she as the statues in here? I asked. Lady Octavia said she is Delios, my lady. Delios? What is she? A goddess from the gods realm. Wait a minute, in the square, there is a Gennaya statue, she is a goddess too, why her statue not in here? Ah, uh, about that Gen. Suddenly Adele said because she is not a worthy goddess. Not worthy, what do you mean, Adele? Jennaya is a freely goddess, where she doesn't care about her responsibility, and just went off to the human's realm to play around. And the god's realm was angry at her, making her lose one of her wings. Lady Octavia said but she is the only goddess, who interacts with humans, whereas other goddesses are apathetic about humans, and just only care about themselves. Seemed she was not happy about what Adele said. Interact with humans, it doesn't mean to blend with humans. There is a line where the goddess needs to know about themselves. Their entity is greater than humans, for what reason a goddess plays with humans? We humans are not an asylum for a goddess who runs away from her duty. What is she? A child. It was the god's realm who shunned her in the first place, made her sick of the god's realm, and went to the human's realm. Well, it's her fault because she got shunned in the first place, she was so obsessed with humans. Even she wrote something about how the goddess or gods can be in relationship with humans that it was a taboo to think about that, and made her get shunned. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? They are a great entity, and they want to have a relationship with humans, what will happen to the next generation from their relationship? They will not have a place to call home, because they are neither human nor god, and they will live long as god. They will suffer from that because they will see all the people they loved and adored around them passed away, making them heartbroke many times from it. Just imagine how many times they will see people around them die, and make them realize it is a curse to be born from the relationship between human and God. But Jen Dash, suddenly the hands of mother in their face. You two, cut it out, and start moving to enter the temple. But mother, I am still curious about why there is no Jen Naya statue in here. Because it is Delios's area, so there is no Gennaya statue, simple, now let's go to the temple, that's it, we were moving on to the temple, and started to climb the entrance stairs of the temple, when we were inside the temple, it was a chamber with a lot of columns inside of it and there were two giant statues of Delios with brave poses, we passed the chamber, moved to the other chamber, in the next chamber, there was another Delios statue with two bonfires beside her, but it was bigger than the statue before, and she sat on some sort of throne. In front of it, there was a platform the size of a human. 
Two people came to us and led us to the platform. There were two other people at each bonfire. On the platform, one person served me a drink with glass. I looked at mother. Accept it, Aurelia, mother told me. I accepted the drink, the two people at each bonfire lit it, and the blue flame appeared. The person beside us asked me to drink the drink she offered. Drink it, Aurelia. Mother told me. I drank it a few seconds later, I suddenly felt sleepy, the one who offered me the drink, requested me to lay down on the platform, but, before, I did that, suddenly I collapsed, in half unconscious, I still felt there was hands who withhold my body from collapsing to the ground, and they brought me to the platform, suddenly, I opened my eyes, and realized, dot I was somewhere, not on the platform anymore, dot I looked around, there was nothing, it was empty, dot in this nothingness, I stood up, and started to walking, I walking, kept walking, kept walking, kept walking, and, I, saw a figure from far away, I ran at it, I kept running, running, but, I realized, the more I chase it, the more it became far away, I stopped to chase it, and took a breath, when I turned my face from the ground, suddenly, the figure was in front of me, I took my face, up, and saw, spoiler, asterisk next chapter will be the turned around asterisk asterisk hope you guys keep hold on with this series asterisk collapse 4 chapter 12 in the emptiness of white i turned my face from the ground and saw a woman figure in front of me she had blonde short hair wore a white robe she was smiling at me somehow i felt the smile was so warm and different from other smile i received i looked closer to her face she had two different color in her eyes in her right eye it was blue eye when i looked at it I felt like in the middle of the ocean, hearing the sound of the waves, and the wind of the ocean. The left one, it was green eye, when I looked at it, I felt like I was in the middle of the woods, hearing the sound of nature. I took a step back from her, and immediately she took a step in front of me, and it kept going on, until I asked her, Who are you? Who I am? How about you guess it? Are you Delios? Suddenly she was in my right and leaned her face in my right ear for what reason I impersonated her. I turned my head to the right so who are you, she was circling around me so who I am, you said I was Delios, there is no merit, I am impersonating her, before, I was in the temple of Delios, so I thought you were Delios, suddenly she stopped in front of me, and turned her face at me, you really don't know me, ha, huh, let me show you something, I watched her put her two hands in her chest, and for a few moments, there were golden lights emitting out from her, especially in her back, the golden light seemed fade away, she wore a long gold cloak, and she was different from before, her hair become more longer, curly, and more bright gold, she wore the white dress robe with golden ornaments around it from the white plain robe, now she wore a gold leaf pattern circlet with blue and green emeralds in the middle of it, wore like a winged sandals from plain feet, a lot of golden bracelets in her hands, and some of golden and silver necklaces in her neck, most importantly was in her back, the golden lights faded away and transformed a giant wing twice taller than her, a clean and pure white wing full of fur, but there was only one wing in her back, not in pair, from that wing, I realized who she was, she came closer to me and said human, with this, surely you will know who I am, yes, I am, suddenly I felt so nervous, great, but for ensure it and formality, let me introduce myself, she took a step back and flapped her wing, I am Jen Naya as you already know I am one of the goddesses, I bowed down to her this lowly name is Aurelia Aurelius, it is a high honor to meet the goddess Genaya, she snapped her finger in the air, and suddenly a stone round table with two chairs appeared out of nowhere in front of us, she said how about we take a seat, we took a seat, she offered do you want to drink, or perhaps a snack, it's alright for me, I don't want to bother the goddess, bother me, her nonsense, again she snapped her finger in the air, and a tea set, a lot of treats and snacks appeared out of blue on the table I am a goddess, of course this small thing is not bothering me, you can take a sip and the snack too, I took a sip of the tea, because she asked to, she asked how about you taste the snacks too, I took a bite of the snacks, how about the taste, well it's tasty, glad I heard that, now, while I was munching the snacks, I heard something odd from her, who are you, I am Aurelia Aurelius like I have introduced myself, no, let me ask you again, who are you? I don't quietly follow your question, it seems you aren't aware of it. I am Aurelia Aurelius from the Aurelius family. Sure, it's who you are, but how about? 
She stood up and walked toward my right side, she snapped her finger again, and a woman appeared beside her. How about her? You recalled her. I looked closer at the woman, she had short black hair, she wore something weird. I have never seen the clothes that she wore. There seemed to be three layers of clothes on the woman, and her pants seemed more thick than any pants I have ever seen. Her shoes were weird with black and white color. All of the garments she wore were thicker than any garments I have ever seen. I don't recall anything about her. I said, you sure about that? I am really sure. All right then. She snapped her finger again, and the woman disappeared, but she came toward me. Excuse me she stuck out her finger toward my forehead, and touched it this may hurt a little. Immediately I was surprised what? I saw a light emitting from her finger toward my forehead. After the light was gone, she pulled her finger from my forehead, a few moments later, suddenly. Asterisk cough asterisk asterisk cough asterisk I spitted out blood from my mouth, and my nose seemed to emitted blood. What? Asterisk cough asterisk have e yo asterisk cough star you do any dot to me? I asked her with struggling blood in my mouth. I gave you something that belongs to you. Asterisk cough asterisk be dot long s dot to me? She snapped her finger again, and the previous woman appeared beside her. Now, can you see the woman figure one more time? Like I had, sigh d, I don't I turned my head toward the woman re dot call, he asterisk cough asterisk and suddenly more blood was coming out of my mouth. Take a deep breath, it's gonna be alright. Asterisk sigh asterisk what are you trying to do to me? Like I have said, I gave back something that belongs to you. What is this thing that belongs to me? Memory, memory, I can't give you all of it, because it can kill you, so I placed a dianoia on you. What is that? She started to circling around me it makes you remember your memory, but it takes a time for the memory to appear in your head, because your brain still can't take all of the memory you had, so it takes time for this memory to be implemented in your brain, if I planted all your memory right now, your brain could not handle it and became shutting down, and why am I spitting blood, that's the side effects of it, Dianoia knows when is the right time to plant your memory to your brain, your brain will become more developed and the space of the memory become more expanded each day, so in this time, Dianoia will implement this memory to your brain. Because of the sudden memory being implemented, your brain becomes aware of it, and reacts to it by flowing the blood from your body to your mouth and your nose because of this small malfunction of the brain. That's nonsense. She stopped circling and suddenly on my right side my existence itself should be nonsense if you think that is nonsense. Suddenly the area around us slowly faded away. She seemed angry see they forced you to wake up, but it's okay. I have given you the dianoia, and for you, don't ever tell anyone about our meeting. At the last second, before the area faded away, she said be careful from Nona, she started to make a move from your action and, I will keep to stay beside you, and the area around me crumbled into deep darkness. I closely opened my eyes, slowly I saw mother in front of my face, with a worried face, it seemed she tried to hold cry, she saw me open my eyes. And immediately she lifted me a little and hugged me. I looked around me, there was my father, Lady Octavi, Adele, and four people from the temple before, and I was still on the platform in front of the Delio statue. I looked at my dress, there was a stain of blood in there and there was blood in my mouth and nose too. It seemed I had vomit a blood while in sleep like I did in that area. Mother finally said a word are you alright, Aurelia? Yes I am alright, mother, before that. Mother, I want to ask you. Mother released her hug from me what is it? Aurelia, why did mother and father try to poison me? Their faces were surprised, and mother said we not trying to poison you, darling. But, that drink. They I pointed to the four people from the temple gave to me, made me sleep without my consent. Did that count as poisoning? Father took a step to me, and said Aurelia, they didn't try to harm you. But what they did count as poisoning right? I saw father and mother looking at each other. Aurelia, it seemed it was our fault. Mother said, yes, Aurelia, it was our fault, the four people from the temple were innocent, we who ordered them to give you the drink. Father said, why? Mother and father tried to poison me. Mother rubbed my head listen, Aurelia, we didn't have any intention to harm you or poison you, we just want to find something from you. Find something from me. Do you remember? When you said you have heard some voices that said something about mortal, ah, I remember that. At that time, Sophia advised us to go here, and seek advice from the temple. And that advice poisoning me. No, my darling, we told them about everything that had happened to you. 
from the nightmare you had, the voices you heard, and the sudden loss of control you experienced, and, they advised us to make a bridge of communication between you and the goddess, so we went here, is that absurd, mother, suddenly one of the four people from the temple went forward to me, and I saw it was a woman, she said we deeply apologize, my lady, but what had you experienced from the madam story, we believed that my lady received some divine revelations, divine revelations, you are not joking right, no, my lady, your physician Sophia had visited here and asked about some divine revelations, so his grace and madam had visited here after Sophia's visit, and from their story and Sophia's story, we assumed it was divine revelations, because of these divine revelations you made me sleep, and tried to make contact with the goddess, yes, my lady, mother asked does it work, Aurelia, I could not tell them the truth, I think it's not, mother, it was just pitch black, their faces were shocked, especially mother, I saw mother stared fiercely at father, father nervously said are you sure about that, Aurelia, yes I asterisk cough asterisk um. it seemed the coughing was still in me, mother's face turned angry, stared fiercely toward father and said I think that's it, dear, mother immediately stood up and waved her hand toward Lady Octavi to come, she came to mother, mother asked can you lift Aurelia to the carriage, and she just nodded, she immediately tried to lift me up, but, I saw father try to speak up hold up, dear, I think there is something that we need to ensure about, before we bring Aurelia back, Lady Octavi seemed confused about lifting me after hearing from father, ensure, you said, what do you want to ensure about, dear, I felt I had done something horrible to her by offering her that drink, but, dear, they said it was safe for her to drink it, it just made her sleepy, safe, sleepy, mother walked closer to father you saw it with your own eyes right, dear, your daughter, Aurelia, spitted a lot of blood in her sleep, and you were just standing there without doing anything, before I ordered them to wake her up, I saw Lady Octavi beside me confused about what to do, she was being ordered to lift me up, but father's intention was different, that must mean something, dear, mother raised her voice enough, made everyone stunned silent, mother gave a sign to Lady Octavi about lifting me up to the carriage, immediately she lifted me up before, father spoke, mother said dear, I think we need to talk about this matter in the home privately, she turned her view toward Lady Octavi and Adele you two may go and escort Aurelia first to the carriage, my husband and I need something to do in here, and can you try to hide this thing from the little too, I don't want them to worry so much, yes, madam, they answered at the same time, Lady Octavi, Adele and I left the place first, on the way left the place, I saw mother angrily kept arguing to father and the four people in the temple, 5, chapter 13, next, we went out from the temple, where I saw Adele lend her ear to Lady Octavi, and they exchanged some words that I didn't hear, after, the word exchanged, their faces looked and nodded at each other, suddenly Adele ran to the carriage direction alone, while Lady Octavi carried me walking to that direction, Somehow I was impressed by Adele, with that long skirt she could run so fast without getting slipped from his skirt. Being carried in her hands like a bridal carry or princess carry was so embarrassing, all people's eyes were towards us especially with some blood in my gown. Some people were shocked, surprised, confused, and pitted about me. We just kept walking toward the carriage direction, I saw Lady Octavi's face, her expression showed no emotion. All of a sudden, I spotted Adele in the distance, she was riding a horse, after some moments, there were the carriage and two guards riding horses beside the carriage, following the carriage, after we spotted her, Lady Octavi stopped and seemed to wait for her, then walked towards her, well it was more embarrassing than walking, more being seen by pedestrians, finally the carriage was in front of us, and more people were surprised, before I was taken inside the carriage, I heard a little conversation from people around us, they were talking about me, is that the duke's daughter? So she is one of the Aurelius family, Lady Octavi laid me down to the couch of the carriage, after I was inside the carriage, I thought it would immediately go, but still I saw Lady Octavia talk with the two guards, inside of the carriage, I was still laying down, and I heard the door closed beside my head, my head being lifted by Lady Octavi, and she took a seat with my head in her lap, I saw her knock the wall between the coachmen, and immediately the carriage went off at a faster pace than our departure from home to the city, on the way, I asked her, what had you talked about with the two guards before, we just had a short brief about the situation, my lady, 
And I saw your horse. Adele is the one who is riding it. I don't know she can ride a horse with that clothes. She can do anything. That's why she is your personal maid. Maybe I will try to learn how to ride a horse. Why out of the blue did my lady have thought about that? If my maid can do that, it makes me want to do it. So I don't feel pointless about it. It's great. My lady has that spirit. How about the little two? Are they all right if we leave first? Well, I believe Adele took care of that, like Madam ordered, and my lady can take a rest. After that, I took a short rest. Unexpectedly, I felt a hand shake my body while I took a rest. I slowly opened my eyes, and Lady Octave, I said, "We will arrive at the front gate, my lady." That fast, we arrived at the front gate and passed it through. After some moments of passing the front entrance, we arrived in front of home. My lady, let me carry you to the bed. A, I can walk with myself. It's better if I carry you, like the madam said. Asterisk, sigh, asterisk. All right then. She immediately stuck out her left hand toward the back of my thighs, while her right hand was on my back. After that, she lifted me up like it was nothing. While she was still sitting, the door of the carriage was opened from outside, and she stood up with me being carried in front of her. While Adele was preparing a small stair for the carriage, the stair was from behind the carriage. It was stored in there. We came out from the carriage. I saw in front of us there were some servants and guards who were waiting for us, and among them there was Sophia. Lady Octave, I walked down the stairs. After she stepped on the ground, immediately Sophia went to us. Are you all right, my lady? With worry, Sophia asked, "I'm all right." I simply answered, "Lady Octave, I said, forgive me. It's better for my lady to clean all of this and go to the bed." So you can freely examine her. Yes, yes, that's great. Sophia answered. We walked toward the inside of the home with Adele in front of us, and Sophia followed behind. We kept walking to the bathroom. When we arrived at the bathroom, there were some servants who were already in there. I saw Sophia leave us alone. Lady Octavia put me to sit on the stool, and immediately all the servants in there, including Adele, undressed me. After that, Lady Octavia lifted me again. Put me in the bathtub, and she left the room. The servants started to wash and clean me, from tip of toe until the tip of my hair. My whole body and the bathtub were full of soap foam. After it was done, they put me back on the stool. There, they were drying me with a towel and dressed me back with a clean white pajama, without notice, without signal, without a sign. Lady Octave, I came into the bathroom again when I was done with everything. She carried me again. And now walked toward my bedroom with Adele following us. Arriving in the bedroom, I saw Sophia was waiting inside. Lady Octave, I laid me down on the bed. After that, I saw her exchange some words with Sophia. While exchanging words, I saw Sophia's expression of guilt and worry. It was depicted by her hand gesture. Her face was face down with her hand gripped hard. At some point, she covered her face with her hands. They were done, and Sophia walked beside the bed. While Lady Octave I and Adele were standing in front of the bed, and out of the blue, she kneeled beside the bed. I am apologize, and my lady. She said it out loud. She reached my left hand and held it tight. This lowly is the one who caused all of this. Please forgive this lowly life, my lady. I was more confused about it before you apologize for something. Can you care to explain it to me? I don't catch anything from your words. Right, my lady. Honestly, I didn't know if something like this would happen toward you. As physician of this family, I try my best to find a great solution or cure for this family. And my lady's case is so different from other cases in this lowly experience. And after I heard that there was a voice emitting in your head while sleeping, and said mortal, I was hastened toward the temple library and asked the people in there about your case. They said to bring you to the temple for make sure. After that, I tried to convince his grace and madam. At first time, his grace was convinced, but madam found it ludicrous. After some time, from his grace convincing, finally, Madam agreed. So all of this is coming from this lowly. It is my fault and my incompetency for this family physician. She said while her face was struggling to look at me. So all of this is your idea, Sophia? Why? E. S. 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 It seems people around me are so interested in my dream. Can you care to explain it to me? Sure, my lady. Like I had explained to you, dreams are coming from our memories, psychology, and sound around us. But that explains just for inhypnia. What is that? Inhypnia, or called uninteresting dream, is a dream of our habits, our memories, or our feelings. Like people who are hungry or thirsty will dream about eating a lot of food or drinking a lot of water, and someone who overstuffed with that will dream about they are vomiting or choking. 
if someone has a lover will dream him with his beloved one, but sometimes he will receive dream of his beloved one with someone else because his fear of his beloved one left him, so that's in hypnia, I see, is there any beside it, yes, it is Oneiroi, it is a dream that predicts the future, there are two methods to know of this dream, the first one is theoromatic Oneiroi, a method where a dream that predicts like the dream shown, for example a dream of being shipwrecked mean that you will experience a shipwreck, the second one is allegorical Oneiroi, a method where a dream that predicts have some kind of meaning in different way, for example a dream of being shipwrecked can be mean that you will be released from bondage or released from slavery, so, a dream from the other day that I have experienced has some kind of meaning, it can be, but how should a temple resolve this problem, the voice emitting while you were sleeping, was a sign of something else, honestly I don't believe that sort of thing, what you mean, I believe a dream is not given by divine things or gods, but my lack of knowledge about what had happened towards my lady, so I went to the temple, I see, now I understand some of it, and I am alright right now, there is nothing for you to examine me, you may take a leave, but, my lady, do you forgive me, yes, I am, she stood up, and walked toward the door, after she left the room, Aldea turned to come towards me and said to take a rest for me, and they left the room, I took a rest, after some rest, I was woken up by Adele, and she said it was dinner time, immediately I went to the dining room with pajamas, in the dining room, I was surprised, because there were only the little two sitting on their seats, the seats of father and mother were absent, maybe because of what had happened today, I took a seat in my seat, after I sat in my seat, Adele suddenly clapped, and some servants came out with some food, I saw Adele acting on behalf of my father who was absent in the dining room, I noticed that the little two were quieter in the dining room than usual, maybe the absence of our parents in the dining room made them quiet, they were eating the food faster than usual, and they finished it before me, they left the table and the dining room without saying a single word, while I was still eating my food, after I finished my food, I left the dining room, on the way to my room, I noticed the little two were standing in front of our parents' bedroom, the master bedroom for our parents was on the first floor, I was watching them from a distance with Adele beside me, they knocked on the door, and there was no sign from inside of the room, their maid seemed to have said something to them, made them walk away from the room, and walk toward us, I tried to hide with Adele behind some ornaments of the hallway, after that they passed us, I kept following them with Adele, they went to the third floor, and went to one of the hallways, where there were two doors facing each other, I saw Ophelia and Aurelio standing in front of each of the doors, they knocked on the doors at the same time, after some moments, there was a sign from both doors, and the door was opened surprisingly, the door that Aurelio knocked was opened by mother, and the door that Ophelia knocked by father, because the door was facing each other, father and mother's eyes were meeting each other, I saw their expressions that seemed to dislike each other, and hustle up to make Aurelio and Ophelia come inside their room, while their maids left them and walked away, I found no word from that event, so I went back to my room, on the way to the room, I asked Adele why is mother and father on the third floor and in those rooms, those rooms are for his grace and madam, sometimes when they were in a quarrel, they usually used those rooms to clear their minds, so the little two are trying to make their relationship better, hope they are going well, after I arrived in my room, I immediately continued my rest in the bed, and Adele went back to the room beside my room, zero,